Okay, I think that's us live, yeah? Okay, welcome to um, Borderway UK Dairy Expo 2024. We're underway at uh, Carlisle Auction, uh, courtesy of Harrison Etherington. Um, myself, uh, Graham Kirby. I'll be doing a commentary along with uh, Alan Timbrell and Richard Bostock. Uh, same trio as last year. Um, you in good shape, boys? Uh, they've reeled us out again this year. Yeah, we'll Timbrell out, RB at the end. Yep. Here fighting fit. So. Yep, everybody's in good shape. Um, so we're sat here, it's uh, six minutes to kick off. Um, and we're just, uh, yeah, we're just waiting for the first class of handlers to come in. Uh, format the same. Probably got to say this year we've had um, phenomenal entries. I think um, I think at one stage I spoke to Glyn, at about 460 livestock entries and another 26 or 27 extras on top of that. Uh, obviously there'll be a few not here, but um, big entries. Uh, the handling classes, which uh, the handlers will kick off at uh, midday. But uh, phenomenal entries for the handlers. I think there's maybe an odd class one, possibly two classes that they'll split yep. as there's not physically room for them. Um, Biggest show of dairy cattle in the country now, isn't it, guys? Really? Yeah. It's, a yeah. And it's, it's not just the, the size and the amount of it that are here. It's the quality. There's tremendous quality right the way down through. And anybody wanting to watch in for the next two days, the young stock classes are just phenomenal. And, like, and then the milking classes, well, they, those cows have, you know, it's a damn sight easier than last year because it was Baltic here last year. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, I remember. I came over Shap yesterday morning. It was 16 degrees difference. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's no snow. There's no frost. And no rain as well, which we're makes we're a not, nice change. We're not sipping brandy to keep thawed out. Well, the, um, last, the last time I was sat in Borderway with you, uh, Kerbis, was black and white sale. And you actually took, <laughs> took a little... I, I got off an hour before you and I rang back to Glynn and said, if you don't tell Kerb to get on the road soon... He's not going to get over shot. Oh, that's right. Going back from, yes, going back from the black and white in December. Put a snow on shot. Yes, it, was, yeah, it wasn't easy. So, um, so no, the conditions are with us. Uh, there is a real buzz about the place. I can, there's a palpable buzz about the yeah, place. Yeah, for yeah. Me. It's starting to build, isn't it? You now walk up seen. and down the lines and, and people are G'd up and they've got big teams here and there's a lot of milk on display. And, yeah, things look, things look real good. So with, um, with a whole heap of... Uh, all heap of stuff going on. Um, probably first shout out of, that I'll give will be to the mainline sponsors this year. So with uh, Cars Billington uh, Agriculture, Holstein UK, CIS, HSBC, and Harrison Etherington. So obviously the uh, the show is indebted to those yeah, sponsors. Yeah. Yep. Uh, with numerous other sponsors that we'll mention along the way. Can't um, happen without them, can it? Really? No, it can't happen without them. And and. Um, and they're all uh, all organisations rooted in agriculture as well, aren't yes. they? Which is good. So. Yes. And there's a tremendous lot of trade stands here this year as well. So anybody wanting to visit and have a look around the trade stands, you know, we encourage that as well. As yeah, I think I think over a hundred trade stands. So yeah, so amazing. that's um, so that's real good. Uh, so just to give you a bit of a, a bit of a rundown on the itinerary, uh, we start at twelve with the showmanship competition. Uh, the championship is scheduled to be about one forty. Showmanship this year is judged by Roger Turner. Um, We've done a little bit of something different this year. We, um, me and Glyn spoke maybe three or four months ago. Thought it would be a great idea to involve a young breeder from this country as an associate judge. <clears throat> so we're really pleased to say that um, Roger Turner this year will be accompanied with an associate judge, uh, Will Horsley from the UK. So it'd be cracking, a cracking young lad and really experienced Good handler as well. Yeah, he? great handler, just fresh from his championship win. And, at a, the and a great opportunity, and there they are, just walking into the ring. Um, so, yeah, the showmanship should be finished about 1.40. Two o'clock, the Heifer Show starts, the Coloured Breed Classes and um, the Coloured Junior Champion. Uh, the Holstein Classes will start at 4.30 and should be finished somewhere around um, 6.30. And then today we'll culminate with the Genus Supreme Heifer Championship. Um, I think one, one thing we forgot to mention sponsor-wise, um, obviously quite new for this year, we've actually got a mainline sponsor for the live stream itself, haven't we? Yes, forgot to mention that. Um, in Holstein International, so thank you very much to them guys. Obviously, one of the leading publications yep. in the dairy industry, um, particularly the We are, we the are available sector. for pictures later, guys. <laughs> <laughs> if uh, if you seriously, if you don't get Holstein International, you are missing out. It's the um, one one magazine uh, I get without fail. Yeah, it's it's if you only get if you only buy one if you well if you only get one magazine, get Holstein International. Great herd features, uh, and we're joined by a special guest. And we are joined. Now. We are joined by Mr. Mark Nutsford. Um, who should have been here a quarter of an hour ago. He's just been to B&Q to get well, just trellis. been to B&Q, so we thought we'd grab a quick word with him, which we have. It looks like we have time. So, Nutty, welcome. All right, Curbs, how's it going? <laughs> I was B&Q. I forgot what I wanted, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, Good. Yeah. So, 
So, no, I know you um, a bit like deja vu, this. Spoke last year, sat here last year and spoke about your forthcoming sale. Um, that went real well. Um, so we just thought we'd get you up, just a little um, bit of a run through as you feel for the show, you feel for the industry. I know, I know me and you spoke earlier on about how things are looking and, um, yeah, just what are, you, what, are you, what are you thinking? What am I thinking? Well, first of all, it's going to be a great show, isn't it? You know, I think there's 151 entries. So, yeah, it's going to be exciting shows, yeah, especially for Riverdale as well. I think there's, uh, since our sale last year, a lot of people have bought animals. I think there's 26 uh, Riverdale ones been entered. Wow. Wow, so I didn't know that. that. Yeah, that, that, that's fantastic, really. And, and yeah, I, I've had a quick look round, not, not round everywhere, but the quality is unbelievable. I don't know, who, who's judging the, the, this afternoon, the Holsteins? Is, is it Roger? Uh, Roger's doing the handling. Oh, Roger's um, doing the handling. And then we've got the two Aussie guys coming in. For oh, yeah, the, so Ben Govett's <coughs> doing, doing yes. the whole thing. Yes. Yeah, well, yeah. he's going to have a great show. I mean, I mean, the world class, some of these heifers out yeah. there are just world class. So, and, yeah, it's going to be a great show. And, I, and, and I, was, uh, I was heartened to hear a few days back when I spoke with Glenn. I think at that stage, livestock entries for all breeds had about 461 entries. Um, and he's had 27 extra entries since then. Um, so really heartened with that, and also really, 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 really pleased, and, and pleased to see the number of the number of handlers for the for the for the junior handlers. With, with I think with one class, we're having to split it because we couldn't physically get them all in, which yeah. is and that's fantastic that young ones are still keen. Yeah, great enthusiasm, really, is because we all know how, how uh, dairy dairy farmers are having a hard time yeah. at the moment, aren't they? So everybody's doing everything they can to promote the herd and. You know, it, it starts with the youngsters, and and I think Holstein UK and and all the local clubs are trying their best to, you know, promote the animals, promote the next generation. Yeah, well, we're, we're need, lost without it, aren't we? Yeah, we we, we need all the encouragement <coughs> we we can have, and uh, yeah, the the industry looks looks bright when you've got all these youngsters like that. You know. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. So. Um so no, it's encouraging to see so many entries uh, in the young stock handling, um, and 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 so and so many people. Yeah, I know if, if you went back maybe maybe two or three years, there was a little bit of talk how showing was finished and it was flat and there wouldn't really be any more shows. And 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 then you know I look around I look around the lines this morning. I wandered up with you a little bit this morning. That's the last thing you would think about if you were at Carlisle today. No, absolutely not. There's great enthusiasm. And, you know, there's great enthusiasm worldwide. You know, I, I, I've judged around the world this, this last year. And whether it's been in New Zealand, whether you go to Canada, whether you go to America, there's been record entries. Yeah, you? yeah, fantastic. You know, Holland, I was in yeah. Holland as well. Again, it's, almost, it was, it's almost like the adversity in the industry. And, 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 and really tighten margins in the industry has, has focused them even more to, to think, well, we're going to get stuck in, and we're going to take two or three to the to the local show or the national show, or, yeah. you know, and, and and really really continue to support our industry via the show ring. Yeah, and especially this show, you know, I think it's been a long winter. We've had a hard, hard wet winter, haven't we? And I yeah, think yeah. People are just just want to get out, want to yeah, get yeah. away from the farm, and and you know, this this is a great chance to go and and, and meet meet the mates, the friends. Yeah, yeah, 100%. have a bit of crack, and yeah. And, and how, many, how many cattle have you here, Mark? How many have Riverdale got? Yeah, here? we've got nine milkers. Wow. Well, so, yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. always like to support the show because you know, Glenn's supported this industry, and 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 H and H have, have supported, especially the. And I remember, I, I remember when. One of our national shows had uh, 26 animals there. And yeah. This is when Glenn started this show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, someone's got to step up to the mark, and, and year on year, it's grown and grown and got better. Yeah, and and and, better and, 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 and Glenn's been right at the forefront of that, but then he has been supported with by Harris and Etherington. So, that, you know, they need amazing. They, they need to amazing. come in for some a pat on the back, really, for me. Oh, oh, for, oh, for sure. You know, and and to allow us to use its facilities as yeah. well. You know, it, it it is just fantastic. We'd be lost without them. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. No, it's uh, the premier show of the year. It's early in the year. It's normally a bit colder than this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, last year was Baltic, wasn't last it? Year it was, last year was last but year. Th 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 this this year, it's yeah, it's great, and it's great for the animals as well. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Cows are ju just settled in, no problem. 
Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, the eating. Yeah. It's not not too cold. Yeah, it's an, and I always I always find when we've shown cattle in the past, it, it's nice relaxed up the cow lines. There's no stress. There's no hassle. Everything's there. Don't feel water, straw, feed, getting access to it. Everything's. It's made easy for the exhibitor. And, and the, no, the, no stress. You want you want to try employing <laughs> Kennedy and 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 Lindsay, and then you'd have stress. We'll just put a but just put a drink ban on. Yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I might not have them then. <laughs> at least they were here at five o'clock this morning. Yeah, but they haven't gone home. They haven't been home. <laughs> they haven't been home, that's right. But uh, they're uh, good guys. The good guys. The best. So, um, the best. So, no, it's uh, four minutes past 12. I'm guessing we're not too far away now from uh, first class of Andalus in, but I'll maybe uh, I'll maybe say thank you very much, Nutty, for coming up and speaking. Two years on bounce. Yeah, yeah. Go for hat trick next year. Yeah, we're, we're <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, looking forward to gracing the purple shavings this year. Purple shavings look sensational. They look sensational. Yeah, they do. Mate. But uh, no, thanks for coming up and talking to us, Mark. Much appreciated. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, have a great show. Yeah. Cheers, yeah. mate. Cheers, bye. Good interview there then, Graham, wasn't it? Back on? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Good interview there with Mark, yeah? Yeah, yeah, but he's... Uh, Mark's Mark, isn't he? He's has, he? has he got nine here, hasn't he? He's nine, 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 milkers. nine milkers here, a packet of work. His biggest problem's been staff. The fact, the fact that they, they, they went to the bar last night... <laughs> And at five o'clock this morning, when they should have been starting work, they were still in the bar. Uh, well, Steve Innes anyway, <laughs> in has come a cropper with his wife. I don't know if you hear about that one. <laughs> no, I didn't know. Yeah, so Steve Innes tried to convince his wife that he'd still been poo-picking all night until six, quarter to six this morning. And then she looked at his hand, and there was a little stamp mark on the back of his hand to say he'd been to a club. <laughs> <laughs> I better, better uh, imagine what club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah That's yeah, a schoolboy yeah. error. But somebody <laughs> said he was trying to see if there was any more VG two-year-olds in Carlisle. <laughs> No, but that, that's the thing about Mark. Like, he's got a load of work on his on his plate and he still made time to come up here, have a quick chat with us, talk about the dairy industry. and Still made time, yeah, and he's, and he's uh, yeah, he's keen. And, and, and them sorts of guys, that, they love coming to this show. The show's helpful with the exhibitors. The exhibitors reciprocate that with the with the organisers. You know, he's not just keen to see the, see the young ones all out there and, and big numbers well, in it, the... Uh, well, he had a wonderful sale last August. And then, and you look at the lineup of cows he's got in there, the nine he's brought. He's still got a wonderful lineup of cows. Like it's not taking anything and, away. And there's a load of Riverdale bred animals as well here, and other names it, because think, of that. Isn't I think it? he was just saying in an interview. He thinks there's 26 here yeah. mm -hmm. of his own, of, his, of which he's nine. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, no, me, 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 and Alan were just talking off screen about people who really support the next generation of our industry, um, and. The, we're, we're talking actually talking about our showmanship judge um, Roger Turner today but Mark's one of them as well isn't he always looks after them young ones and that's reciprocated when he has a big sale and yeah, yeah. they all come and support him and take an animal home as well yeah, fantastic so. almost how it should be really yeah I think I think you know I look back into my younger days and a lot of people put a lot of time and effort into teaching me the things that were going on and uh, teaching me how to judge and how to handle myself in a ring and, and to hand and to pass that on to the youngsters is you know we're only custodians while we're here. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. No, that's a, that's a great call, that Alan. So I don't know if you can hear in the background, but um, the first class of handlers are coming into the ring. Uh, this show starts with the uh, mature showman and works down to the youngest ones. So the first class in, I think, was eleven senior showmans. Showmans. Se showmans. <laughs> showmans. Se senior show people. Or persons, which should be, <laughs> but uh, yeah, just walking into the ring now. And a great, th uh, I think Roger will be a great, a great tutor, <coughs> like a great mentor for uh, for Will Horsley. It'd be it'd be a good man to. We were just saying exactly that off screen, weren't we, Alan? <coughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm very lucky. I work with Roger because obviously Jetstream is the CEO of Jetstream in the world, and I'm obviously working, you know, heading up Jetstream in the UK. And having met Roger and talked to Roger a lot, you know, he's very similar to myself. 
we don't have any children, either of us, so, but he's a big custodian, he's a big believer in youngsters. This is the way to keep them interested and uh, bring those youngsters on. And uh, I don't know whether you can see in the ring, though, we can see this, that Roger's just talking to Will, how he sets himself up to judge a big class of handlers. And uh, Roger's judged all over the world. Like, you know, yeah, yeah. I'm in awe of where he's been, Brazil. You can see him just in the centre of the screen there now, yeah, can't you? Yeah, just having a bit yeah. of a chat to, to and each other. And he's just talking to Will, like how he, how he wants to set it up, how, you know, how, he, how he's envisaging judging the classes here today. And uh, Roger would be a really good mentor for yeah, him. Yeah, it'll be a great tutor for him. Yeah. Anyway, back to the action then. So mature showmanship, age 21 to 25. This class sponsored by Holstein UK, our breed society. Um, and we have got five of the six entries forward today. Oh, we haven't checked. We're not looking at our update sheets. That's where I'm going wrong, RB. I don't think I've got an update sheet for showmanship. No, I don't think I've got an update sheet for showmanship. So we'll uh, we'll use what God gave us in the middle of our faces and and look at the ring. So uh, you can just see on screen there. That's Emily Davis. Emily Davis from Devon. Yeah. Yeah. A really experienced showman on the jersey heifer there and the black shirt. So she's just be got a new job. She's working for the Saskatchewan Colostrum Company. She's going to head up the Southern Division for that. So she's uh, wow. She's the new head of uh, calf sort of like uh, colostrum. Sort of like all deals, all dealings with calves, uh, right? And in yeah, the yeah, south So yeah, yeah, fair play to her. Just on the right hand side of the screen, you've got David Howard from Ayrshire. Just on the red heifer there, just in front of Pete Cotton. Yeah, he must be an additional entry. He's not in the catalogue, but um, Rachel Corley from. Um, the Republic of Ireland. From Monaghan, spent a bit of time over there last year. She's uh, just on a placement at the moment with Progressive Genetics. Nice part of the world, yeah. She's a very nice young lady, she is. Yeah, decent girl. Always smiling. Having to work with Steve McLaughlin, obviously, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then, obviously, we've got Rosie Dennison on the uh, black and white heifer in the middle of the screen at the moment. A really experienced showman in her own right. Yeah. Quite a nice calf, that, actually, as well. Yeah, I'm sure that's a Denmark calf. But, uh... yeah, she's got three three Denmark calves here. I actually saw Michael last week and said to him, I said, uh, have your entries, what are they like? I wouldn't have a clue. Rosie's did it all. She's really keen, isn't she, yeah, Rosie? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No. Obviously, it's uh, quite unique for a, a show of showmen to begin with the oldest class first. But yeah, I think it's I a quite really, like it. really good opportunity for the young ones to watch, isn't it? I quite like it. If the young ones are keen, I think, I they'll, think be, they'll be ringside now watching. Well, you can, see, you can see there's a few just underneath, watching the, mature showmen. underneath yeah. the banner there on the, the back wall. There's a few young showmen with their whites on and yeah. hats on and... And then they sh and and they, and they should all listen to the judges' reasons yeah. to see what the judges picked up on. So you pick, totally pick yourself up a couple of places if yes. you listen carefully. Yeah, yeah. Can't I see you? some of these youngsters that have never ever been in a handlers' competition before. They get a chance to watch these seniors go through their paces, and that. and uh, yeah, it's really good experience for them. It helps break the ice. They they know what you know. They're seeing what it's all about. Roger just having a. Quick gander at Pete Cotton's calf. The art of showmanship is making your heifer look as best as it possibly can. So that's what Roger will be looking for, just how they handle it. I've the always, um, and the little bit of judging I get to do, I always, for the certainly for the mature handlers, I'll ask them, I'll ask them if there's a certain part of the calf that they try to hide from me or a certain part of the calf that they want me to see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and if you've done the job right, they'll evaluate the calf. Yeah. And, know, know and, what and, and, if, and if a handler says to me, my calf's slightly high pinned, 
So when I stand it, I just roll it back on its legs and tuck its pins under it. Yeah. To, to, to my way of thinking, in my own mind, they're moving up a couple job. of places. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's, that, that distinguishes a good from a good handler from a bad handler. They've acknowledged the strengths and weaknesses yes, of their half, yes, haven't they? Yes, or, or they may, they'll may say to me, my calf's got a really long neck, and, and, I, and, I want you to, and I want you to see that. Well, again, you know, and, 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 that's, and it's not coincidence. That's why Roger Turner, Brian Carscadden, Dan Donut, that's why them guys get the best cows to lead because, because they know the faults because, they know the strength because they make the best jobs yeah and you can you can guarantee that when roger turner leads leads something uh wherever in the world it is the judge won't see the faults but he'll see all the strengths so roger was telling me yesterday when we were traveling up from manchester airport that uh, jim butler uh, from uh, butler view rang him up uh this time last year and told him that he had a heifer in for him to lead at the winter fair canadian winter fair and he was going to win it he was going to be junior right. champion and Roger said, do you know that? He said, it's going to be junior champion. Don't matter where it is, he's heading for the Royal to win junior champion. And he said, the day he won junior champion. That would be the Lahoo heifer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Victor. Yeah. Yeah. And he said, he just, Jim said, six months before <laughs> that, I got the heifer, you're leading it. Yeah, yeah. Frankman. Call out a few, uh, a few other big thank yous, really. So, Border and Lakeland, Holstein Young Breeders, um, Obviously, manning the bar in the, the top right-hand corner of the screen. A, gra um, a great addition to the event last year. The, yeah. The bar made a real social... Butty was knocking the door down at 6 o'clock this morning trying to get a pint. <laughs> 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 and uh, Holstein Young Breeders are also uh, manning the ring as well and uh, just keeping the ring tidy Good. Um, throughout throughout the sh duration of yeah. the show. Maybe uh, I should maybe mention the uh, the draw that they're having for a calf. Yeah, yep. that's probably... I think, I think the Border Lakeland are hosting the Young Breeders Rally this year. Uh, and I know I've been involved in uh, with the Young Breeders. It, it's, a, it's an event that doesn't happen on its own and, um, and it will take a packet of cash to make it happen. So... With that in mind, Dave Hudson, I think it's Dave Hudson, has, has kindly yep. um, yeah, yeah, a woman, yeah. kindly donated a, a woman be calf, um, ten pound a ticket. All the proceeds go to the young breeders to assist them. Um, put it. Eamon Monaghan, Eamon Monaghan, Richard Armstrong, them sorts of guys. Uh, and uh, ten pound a ticket, and you could end up walking away with a, a worm be calf. And if you're coming up either today or tomorrow, head over to the Border and Lakeland Bar, and you can yeah, grab yep. a ticket there as well with your yep. pint. And they've actually, um, Will was telling me, they've actually brewed their own beer. So the local brewery have made a beer, and it's called... I'm glad you said the local brewery have done it, because I wouldn't trust Will Horsley <laughs> and the others to do to Will do Horsley it. probably went on the tasting <laughs> ceremony. So later on, we have to have a pint. We'll get three pints of Lakeland HYB. Oh, right. We're bored of Lakeland HYB. Um, so just looking at the, the provisional lineup that Roger and, uh, and Will have... Arranged for us. Pete Cotton currently in first. Emily Davis in second. Rosie Dennison third. Rachel Corley in fourth. So what you've got to say is three roses between two thorns. <laughs> I... Uh I really do think the purple shavings really show these animals off, especially from our vantage point. It's coming out really well on the colouring. I'm just trying to remember which cow it is that it was World Dairy Expo, and there's a picture of them chapping out jam Grand Champion. It was on purple shavings, yeah. and they're like purple shavings, are like flying in yeah. the air, and every, everything looked proper cool. Hopefully, we'll see a bit of that. So you can just see Roger going back and having a word with now with Will talking about what his place is. I think it's probably going to be a bit of moving in, in this uh, in this I lineup. Do you think? Don't know. Don't know. So he's pulled out Peter in first. Emily and then Rosie. Yeah, just as they are. Mm -hmm. Ring steward Ross Murray just leading the, leading the heifers around into the final lineup. You can see uh, Hannah Williams from Holstein UK, the sponsor, just primed with the rosettes on the left-hand side. So, so 
For a tall, gangly lad, Pete does uh, does handle them well, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, he's pretty. He's pretty good. He's so laid back. That's the secret. Well, it does transmit through to the calf if you're mm -hmm. anxious. I don't know what he'll be like after he's got married. <laughs> if he's anything like me, he's just going to delegate all that yeah. to, the, <laughs> to, to the missus to sort out. Yeah, I think as we said earlier, I think um, a couple of the later classes with 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 big numbers in them, uh, we are going to. I think they are they, they are, are intended to split them. I think. Yeah, yeah, they are intended to split. Well, there's a couple of, um, there's a Jersey two-year-old class tomorrow that's going to be split as well. Right. Quite a number of Jersey heifers, and obviously they're only using half the ring, so they're going to split the class. So. Yeah, well, that's... Yeah. It's, yeah. Not, it's nice to see, particularly... So, la 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 last year... Steady, ...steadily growing the Jersey section here, and if you're sat at home and you've got a potential contender for next year, don't be afraid of speaking to some of the guys that have come up this year. Find out how they got on and their experience of the show. Everyone down the lines can is so helpful. Mm. Get 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 teamed up with 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 a neighbour. Bring your heifers up. Bring your cows up together. Yeah, yeah. Work together. Yeah. Teamwork makes the dream work. I was in Yorkshire three weeks ago and I actually saw a really good jer jersey at Studder, at, the, at Richard and James Pratt Studder. Mm. And, uh, good lads, um. I said, uh, how come that jersey's not going? And he, <laughs> I think they were jokingly he said, Robbo won't take it. <laughs> right. I have just uh, seen him by the side of the yeah, ring. Yeah, Robbo's nothing, here. So he yeah. should have. No, Robbo's here. He's clipping up. Yeah. He's, Robbo won't take it. I said he should get colour telly then, because <laughs> it, <is>, it was <laughs> a real good cow. It was. It was too good to leave at home. And uh, but you're, you're, you are right. What you say with the, um, you know, there'll be there'll be inexperienced show people at home that maybe never just got stuck in with the shows. And maybe just haven't got the confidence yeah. to come as well. Go, go, and, go and speak to a neighbour that shows yeah. at this level and, and you'll find that you'll get no end of um, advice. Aren't they? All right. Yeah, so we've just got some results come through here now. So, um, obviously, congratulations to Peter Cotton, number 689. From Staffordshire, um, he is our first place mature showman. Um, narrowly just having the edge over our second place showman, Emily Davis. Um, just to finish up and round off the placings, we have Rosie Dennison in third, Rachel Corley in fourth, and David Howard in fifth place. Roger has just given a great set of reasons, but we're just having a little slight technical difficulty with his mic um, to get it through the live stream. So you can just take my word for it. That is an exceptional set of reasons. I'm sure Alistair will have that, uh, they'll have that sorted. In oh yeah, they're, 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 they're great guys up here at uh, Herd's Media and this, none of this would be possible without them. So. Alistair Herd, here he is, top man. He'll be on the case, no doubt. And just whilst uh, Roger is giving his uh, his reasons, we just thank the the class sponsor again, Holstein UK. Um, nice to to see their stand ringside, and just you can just see it on the top right of the right hand of your screen now, just below the commentary box. We have best seats in the house here, RB, just about. I think so. Yeah, yeah. We're on the we're on the first floor, third, looking down on it all. It's third uh, eye view. Great view. So the next class of showmen is coming into the ring, and this is our senior showmanship class, aged between 16 and 20, kindly sponsored by HSBC. So how many have we got in this one, Arby? Um, well, catalogued, it's a big class. It's a, it's a massive class. Maybe just have to see, but this could be one. This could be one of the classes that they've split. They were talking about splitting the class. Yeah. 
and picking and picking seven out of the class. 20, to, 26 catalogue to so. go to go forward, and then the second part the second part of the of the um, of the senior showman finding another seven and then um, and then putting them all in together and then, and then putting those fourteen together for yeah. for the class. Maybe just wait and see how many uh, yeah how that's many it. come so in. Just. Uh, on the right-hand side of your screen now, you can see Mark Bryson. He's actually got out of bed. They were a little worried at uh, nine o'clock this morning. They won had a few beers last night, is they? Can't quite quantify, but <laughs> uh, there was talk uh, from uh, his uncle that he hadn't got out of bed. And then, <laughs> just behind, uh, just behind Mark is uh, number six one four, Caitlin McCormick from Dumfries, on the red heifer. And then Max Bryson on the heifer that is just doing a code brown. Just ahead of Sean Ed Morris on the brown Swiss heifer in the burgundy shirt. Just on the screen there now is number 608, Eva Cooper who is not from Shrewsbury. She is from <laughs> Sweden, isn't she? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think so. Does she not own that heifer in... She does, yeah. She owns it in partnership yeah. with Brenton with Brent, and Crothers. With Brent Crothers. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's nice to see her over again. She obviously came over last year to help Brenton. She's just a lovely person. She's you know, mm -hmm. very chatty, very lovely person. Like, and, uh, and there's our commentary point. We just give you... There we go. Best seats in the house. Arby, Arby doing his royal ways. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure he. I, I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure he's. Don't go back in anger on. We could just do this. <laughs> <laughs> you get, you get your lighter out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the master judge and uh, associate judge just having a gander. Rory Scott just walking in the ring, about nine foot tall. He's a tall lad. at the bottom of the screen there on the Dairy Shorthorn heifer is Katie Thompson from Newcastle why I why I that's a really nice short on calf mind as well yeah it's not a bad calf that no, it is. I saw it in the lines this morning Jack Wilson behind her just making the turn yeah another keen young lad keen investing young guy, in a few yeah. pedigrees that, now himself and that young lad works real hard Mm -hmm. I didn't see a clipper out of his hands yesterday. He was clipping all day yesterday. Everybody else's cattle then got his own ready. Yeah. No. If he's if he's putting the miles in, he'll um he'll he'll get his just desserts. He'll get yeah. his just rewards. I'm sure. And yeah, lovely lad, though. Lovely lad. Nice family. And then Mark, obviously, again following following Jack. Oh. Code Brown. Come on, Jack. Pay attention to your heifer. Looks like they're maybe going to get them all in. I think it's a big class. There's not a lot of uh, not a lot of swinging cat room, is there? Somebody hasn't told it, perhaps to, to have the class, or no, I don't know. I have to tell Ross to breathe in. Well, he's still got them coming. Yeah, yeah. I think they're going to put the whole class in. I think. This is impressive. This is like just look at that now. That's a bird's eye view. What a class of showmen. Second class of the day. Quality UK and UK Dairy quality. Expo. Unbelievable. Great for the industry. Yeah, yeah. Don't forget, we are live all day today and all day tomorrow. So if you can't be here, make sure you do tune in tomorrow. What's, what's the best way of finding this, RB? Well, they can obviously see us, <laughs> so there's no point in telling them. <laughs> they, are, they are the... Um... But if you go to um, Dairy Expo... Yeah, but yeah. You're obviously listening, so you've found <laughs> us. I don't, to be totally honest, it must be easy for us to find because the wife's just sent me a picture that she's taken and, and we're on the screen, so she's found it. So if my wife can find it, anybody can find it. <clears throat> 
Roger's just conversing with our other ring steward, even the ring. Boards for the side <laughs> of the rings. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's nice to see Yasmin's here, Yasmin Bradbury. Yeah, I saw Yasmin earlier on. Yeah, I've yeah. Been there for a while. Yeah, wouldn't be a show if Yasmin wasn't there. Just stacking them up a little bit in twos. It's like Noah's Ark just by the entrance of the ring there now. <laughs> I seem to remember, I remember the year Marie Eve judged it from Quebec. Yeah, that would have been it, in two years ago, wouldn't and it? it? And it seemed to be done and dusted in no time. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what class size was then, but I'm, I'm guessing from the time it took her, it didn't seem that long, but from the time it took her, they can't. They can't have been. They can't have been at many classes with this number in. No. This is just a phenomenal number of hands. I think last year we had a good turnout, but they're still coming in now. We've had some very good judges over the last few years, haven't yeah, we? Yeah. Obviously, Tom last year, Tom yeah, Lovis, yeah. Mariev, yeah. previous year. I think she normally. I think Mary Eve normally listens. I don't know what time it'd be in Quebec. There'd be five hours different. She's probably having a Quebec breakfast that you're quite partial to, oh, then, yeah. Kirby. The Quebec breakfast. Yeah, the Quebec breakfast is coming out again. Marie Eve, the Quebec breakfast. Always gets a mention at UK Dairy Expo. It's called Peyton the Recipe, I think. We're just jealous. And Kirby we? tours went out there last November. It was a good, successful tour. Wasn't it? it was a good. It was a great tour. We toured, We went into Quebec. Uh, 55 on my tour. Mm. Uh, yeah. So and 55 went. came home. 55 came back. Yeah. That's that was. Um, <laughs> that's always a bonus. Yeah. Success. Yes, it was a yeah, it was a good tour. Everybody, well, I think everybody enjoyed it. It went down pretty well and good. enjoyable. They're still coming in. Yeah, so six thirty there. Jay Adamson just on the red calf, just gone off off screen. Mm. I think this could well be it. Standing room only. Twenty four calves in a class, twenty four showmen, all with a lot of experience. Decades of experience combined in this class right now. Graham's even just stopped to take a picture, it's that impressive. Phenomenal, really. It's not going to be an easy class for uh, for Roger. He had a class of uh, class of five previously, and this one is going to take a lot more sorting out. Oh, Alan's found uh, found some birthday shout outs. <laughs> we'll do them in a minute. <laughs> Just having a quick look at these heifers now that have just been double stacked by the entrance. 616 there, the little uh, brown Swiss heifer, Shunhead Morris from Shrewsbury. Jersey heifer at the bottom of the screen there, Kirsten Sloan from Ayrshire. Just behind that, Alfie Hay from Cumbria on his heifer. Good young lad. Bottom right hand corner of the screen right now. And just making oh, all stop, all stop. I think this is the hardest competition for the handlers because calves have been in all winter. This is probably the first show they've hit the circuit at this year and it, and it's all a little different. Yeah, they are they are better for an outing of calves. Yeah. And a little bit different as well. They may have been shown up. before, but it's just they've had a few months off. They're just not used to it again. And if we if we can get our calves to like a Garstang show or a Great Eccleston show or that sort of thing, yeah. the, the the better for it come the Lancashire qualifier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the qualifiers are going to have to be earlier this year. The National Calf Show is going to be end of September. New venue as well. New venue. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Exciting. Yeah, yeah. Exciting. Yeah, one or two calf shows and maybe just uh, qualifiers. The dates will have moved because there has been odd ones. Yeah. 
yeah. right pretty close to the to the national, but that um, hopefully that doesn't cause too many problems. But it's a nice venue. It's central. Awesome venue. Yeah. The venue it should have been out for a long time. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's where it belongs, and our young readers will really enjoy it there. Yeah. It'll bring back some memories, won't it, of the National Holstein show in the early two yeah. thousands. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Alfie Hay there just doing a bit of a spin at the bottom of the screen. I think access for every club, though, is going to be easy, easier for there than, any, than anyone oh, else. Oh, 100%, yeah. yeah. It was nice to go back to Stoney last year, but you don't say access is easy for everyone, whereas that's quite close to the motorway. Well, um, I, I, I live pretty close to Stoney, and yeah. I went to Dairy Tack the other day, and it still took me two and a half hours, so yeah. <laughs> if you pick, it, pick, pick the wrong time to go there, it can be an absolute pig of a journey. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. 6-2-2 two, two there, just having a bit of a spin in the middle of the ring. That is Jonathan Mars from Cumbria. Yeah. Alan Timbrell's had a care package of cake delivered to, <laughs> to the commentary <laughs> box. <laughs> Yeah, Alan was a bit uh, bit upset of the lack of food at, on the commentary box uh, last year, so he's come up with celebrations and everything. Good young handler just to the right there, RB. Um, Becky Hines. Oh, yes, from uh, yeah. Southern Ireland, the Republic of Ireland. I was lucky enough to judge Charleville Shaw last year. And, Virginia, uh, yeah, uh, she no in uh, in Charleville. Okay, she um, yeah she she won the handle won a, a class comfortably. Her sister also won a class. Her sister's mm -hmm. uh, her sister's pretty good as well. I think her sister is here. Actually, I did see her. Yeah, earlier, yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's helping uh, Molly Westwood and Team Panda, isn't she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keen uh, keen young girls and well supported. Uh, both girls well supported by their parents. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Not scared to invest in the odd pedigree as well. No, no, that's. Um, there we are. You can just see some, see some young breeders there, just on the side of the screen, just watching these senior showmen, just seeing if they can pick up a pointer or two. Yep. Yeah, that, no, that's good. That's. Um, I know when uh, when my daughter was uh, was in her early years with is HYB. She, why, that's why some, is she in her late years now? But she's out of it now. <laughs> she's, she, she's she's out earning and finished. So. Um, so, yeah, but no, I, I always encourage her and went with her in the early days, stand ringside and pick up on what the judge, uh, on the judge's reasons and um, and what he was looking for. And, uh, yeah, you can maybe pick, you can maybe move up, uh, move up one or two places, just um, just being observant. Mm hmm mm hmm Katie Watson there, just on the screen, to the right of your screen, and Heffa with the... Uh Long heifer that she's leading. Yeah, this is definitely a head scratcher. Don't know whether Roger's just asking him to move or he's trying to swim across the ring.
Yeah, this is definitely a head scratcher for our two judges. Just uh, getting them to stop one more time and a few calves, just like you say, just probably just a bit out of practice, a bit nervous, moving around a little bit, making, posing a challenge to some of our, our show people here. Becky Hines' calf hasn't put a foot wrong, has it? Look at her. So well under control, the bottom right-hand corner of that screen. She's been over for a few days, hasn't she, helping uh, helping Molly? Yeah, yes, I think so, yeah. So she'll have been putting practice in at home. Yeah, no, she's a um, focused young lady, that is for sure. Helping Molly with her new uh, new robotic milking setup. Yeah, see, is she, is, she, uh, is she aware with that now? Is she, she is, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Fair play. Yeah, fair play. Fair play to Molly there. I think um, Molly's parents were one of the first farms to have robots. Right. Originally. Right, yeah. When they were in, uh, in, the, in the West Midlands. Right, okay, yeah, I didn't know that. So it's nice to see them uh, continuing with the robotic milking. Fantastic. Fantastic. Six, two, three there, just going off screen. Alice Coldwell. Showmanship uh, built into her pedigree. Her father was an expert showman and showmanship judge. 624 there, Becky Hines, the person we were just speaking about. Good DJ at this show, some good songs going on in the background. <laughs> Shame you can't hear them at home. But you've still got an opportunity to jump in the car and join us for the Heifer Show. Heifer Show kicking off at about 2 o'clock, Graham? Yeah, I think I think it's about 2 o'clock. And then we're expecting the black and whites about sort of half four or five. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coloured uh, colored breeds first and then the black and whites a little bit later on. Something a little bit different for your screens this year. Obviously, we, uh, we will read out the results as and when, but we'll also remind you about previous results at the bottom bottom third of the screen and the right hand side will uh, also remind you of uh, a couple of important dates not to miss as well yeah a, few, a couple of sales um, a couple of forthcoming sales that uh, we intend to maybe get um, get a couple of people maybe uh, maybe Steph Doherty Steph Doherty and uh, Richard Armstrong uh, maybe get them up to the commentary point during the course of tomorrow both got some high-profile sales coming up, haven't Just they? Just to tell us what they've got um, got coming forward. We've, um, always good, uh, always good to get them sorts of guys up, promote the sale, and see what uh, see what the sale will hold in store for uh, any potential buyers. Mm -hmm. Keen young, uh, keen young breeders. I think we'll have uh, we'll have president of Allstein UK tomorrow, RB. Yep, Andrew Jones will uh, hopefully join us tomorrow yep. morning. But just yep. before we kick off, so. Yes, the show will kick off um, at nine o'clock, but join us from half past eight when we will have a few speakers. Brian Benke, when are we do Is he going to be? He'll be joining us today. Um, yeah, just before the the black and white half of show. Interesting guy over from the states at see the moment. Can see if we can call a Roger as well, our showmanship judge, and have yep. a quick quick catch up with him too. Yeah, yeah, always good to um, always good to canvas her opinion on the show and um, and and sort of pick the brains as to where the industry is uh, in their neck of the woods. Obviously, yeah. Roger from uh, pretty close to Madison, I think. Yep, yep, yep. Unless he's had a nervous breakdown after this class, <laughs> and he probably won't want to come and join us. <laughs> Horsley's nice and relaxed. Yeah, Roger Turner, obviously working with Alan at Jetstream Genetics. Previously working with uh, with Alter Genetics as a regional sire analyst and international sales manager. Tenure of over 18 years. Some going, isn't it, Graham? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's respected. Um, he'll be respected right across the globe, Roger, in the... Um, For lots of different things as well, yes, obviously. Yeah, in the in dairy the, industry. In, in the AI industry, but also as a professional dairy cattle fitter. That he did that full-time for 12 years before joining the AI industry. Graham's just trying to find his notes on the judges, which I've ripped out. <laughs> They're here in my hand. All right. I wonder where they've gone. Oh, there they are. <laughs> yeah, but he's, but he's just an all-round decent guy, isn't he, Rog? He's 
See him at Madison, see him at wherever, Swiss Expo, Italy. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I'm pretty sure the first time I ever met Roger, I'll, probably, I'll, check, I'll check with him when we speak to him later on, was at uh, Kentville Shaw. And I think his parents were selling up just after the show, or maybe... They were Railhaven Holstein. Railhaven, yeah. They, and um, I, think, I, think, I think maybe Roger and his sister were fitting at the show and... Did they give me a flyer for the for, for the forthcoming sale? I can't just remember now. I'll, 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 we'll speak with Roger about it when uh, when, when he we comes get, and joins when, us. When he comes and joins us, um, but that's uh, that is a lot. Of, that could be twenty five years ago, maybe more. Um, but no, yeah, decent decent guy. Always good to cross his path uh, wherever you are. Um, yeah, I've had uh, had the good fortune of working with Roger in the past, and yeah, just an absolute gentleman, and really supportive of me and my role and stuff. So. Yeah, nice guy. Good guy, good guy. What are you stuffing in your face? <laughs> Alan's just having a little snicky snacky snoo. If Mrs. Weatherup Senior is listening at Park End, your uh, aero, your aero cake, mint aero cake, was very nice. <laughs> it's a little bit like test match special when we get to this stage where there's Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Bright from Perthshire has sent us a lovely chocolate cake. <laughs> so any of the ladies uh, or any even gentlemen, we're not uh, sexist here for a testing cake. Yeah. If uh, if anybody from Cumbria, Scotland, or any of the other places want to send us a cake for tomorrow. Yeah, we, instead, we, of, instead of getting the, yeah. the Hollywood handshake, you'll get the timbrel thumbs up. Yeah, yeah, we, we have, uh, you know, we, we're quite partial to brownies, flapjack. Just no soggy bottoms. <laughs> yeah, no, no soggy bottoms. <laughs> I don't know what you're on about. <laughs> <laughs> this is a massive class. Well, they're having a meeting of minds now. They're just, um, just chewing a few things. Or I'm sure Roger has a... An idea of where he's going to go. This will, this will be, and, and these um, these handlers, I know they're not the they're the senior handlers, so they'll have they'll have sh they'll have handled in uh, in lots of various shows up and down the UK and maybe wider afield, but not many of them will have been in a bigger class than this. I wouldn't have said. Ring steward in position now, so get ready for the point. He's keeping people moving. He's he's doing his Superman impression. We thought he was swimming before. <laughs> Just walking across uh, the route, rain, uh, swimming. I think he thinks he's Superman. Lots of people ringside now from up and down the country and a little further afield. Yeah, filling up filling up pretty good, I would say. For the showmanship, this is yeah, probably... Yeah. Yeah, as many people as we have had watching yeah. second yeah, class of the you day. And you, you generally find with showmanship, you get parents watching, and some of the younger ones, you'll have parents and grandparents coming in. So a good point to grandparents. We've got Robert Butterfield coming to join us in the next class. He's, uh, during the next class, his granddaughter's actually going to be out there leading, so I thought it was a really good time to talk to Robert about uh, everything, about being a, a proud grandparent, and uh, so we're going to interview him uh, Oh, that'll be good. A while. Yeah, yeah. So I saw him getting ready for it before, hoisting his trousers up under his armpits ready. <laughs> <laughs> A la Simon, Simon Cowell. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen so Butty being put, used in the same phrase as Simon Cowell before. <laughs> yeah. on, on, only when it comes to trousers and camel toes. <laughs> <laughs> First pull, RB. Yeah, there we go. Number 623, which is uh, Alice Caldwell. Like I said... Uh, She's always done well in the past, Ellis has. It's no surprise when no. her father's who, who he is. Yeah. Peyton Robertson. 626, yeah. yeah. Peyton, another really experienced showman. And yeah. Nice to see her on a Holstein for once rather than a jersey. Yeah, no, she's, uh, she helps Molly out quite a bit. Molly Westwood down mm -hmm. there at Panda. Oh, feisty one there in the back of the ring. Who are you pointing at next, Rog? And Becky Hines will be pretty close. That calf that she has is just, there you go, Becky Hines pulled in third. You could be the judge, Graham. Yeah, I could do this. This would be no problem. <laughs> it would be enjoyable. It would be really enjoyable. You get classes this size. 
It's enjoyable to judge Clark. Oh. Rory Scott in fourth. Towering above all the other competitors. RS Turbo. Takes a big heifer to, for Rory to lead, though, doesn't it? To look in balance with him. Jack Wilson coming in. Fifth place. Oh, you, make, you make top six in a class like this. Yeah. And also, it's not over till it's over, is it? You can still win it or lose it in this first Well, you, at this stage, it. you can throw it down the road. Yeah. You've got everything to win and everything to lose. Yeah, yeah. Megan Innes coming in now. Another family that's not afraid to invest in nice, no. nice pedigrees no. and yeah. stuff. And He's got a really nice red and white uh, heifer that he bought in Bordaway in December out there. I don't know where you've seen her. Oh, he's just down here ringside, Steve. He's, uh, Stood next to the Sue, the chief Sue from last year. I, and think uh, she, I think she shows as a second calf senior too. Yeah. She and and she could take some stopping for intermediate. Uh, no, for, she looks for me. good. She the chief. Good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. She looks yeah. good. From the brief, you know, you don't see, you haven't seen them all. Some are led down. No. And, uh, but yeah, early thoughts for me are that she'll be in the shake up. Yeah, looks yeah. good. Get them full of milk tomorrow, and and could be anyone's, couldn't it? Yeah. They got to do the work from now till then, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Everything's got to go right for everyone. They've only takes a night of not eating for yeah. it all to go down. Yeah. The wrong I think way. I think that's another thing for uh, for maybe those people that in it are inexperienced uh, bringing cattle to a show. It's not just at the show. The work is the the the, the difference between being in top few and bottom few is, is probably the work you put in yeah. two, three, four, five months prior to the yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Having them on the right diet. Having them clipped so you can assess condition. Certainly with calves, you keep them clipped, and, and you'll find that you need to take a bit of condition off them or put a bit of condition back on them. And, and um, I say a couple of inches of hair can hide all them things. And, can't and, and you and not just, actually yeah. don't know what you're working with. And just be really, really focused on your job, and, and um, you know it can make a lot of difference. I think the one thing that talking to Nutty yesterday, Mark Nutsford yesterday, was that uh, Mark said he got here, he tied a cattle in the in the store, he gave him some hay and some water. And just left them. Just let, 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 yeah. let, just, let, just let cows be cows. Yeah, let, let them let calm himself. down yeah, after yeah. their big journey. Just let them sell. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people, you know, a lot of people want to harass cattle or want to wash them. Oh, let them settle. Them. Let them settle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 100%. New surroundings. They just need to get used to their surroundings. Obviously, sponsors of the, this class, just a quick reminder, is HSBC. Big supporters of the youth. I know there's a lot of new entrants that come into dairy, and HSBC are really supportive of, of people starting out their journeys in dairy. So thank yep. you to them for everything they do for our sector. If we can if we can find someone from HSBC, maybe drag them up for a quick word yeah, at some point that, uh, later sure. on or tomorrow. Hmm. Get a prediction for interest rates. Six twenty, just at the bottom of the screen there. Kirsten Sloan on the jersey, just pulling in now. Honestly, if you have if you have got some time and want to come and join us in person, jump in them cars now, get up here, you will make there for show, most likely, and you can get involved in this great atmosphere around the ring. As you said, I've never seen so many people actually sat around watching the handlers' competition. And there's more handlers here than ever, so there's more grandparents and parents watching. The and also just people who genuinely care about yeah. the next generation yeah. of our industry as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah, it's good to see. Got to fancy a beer now. <laughs> First year we did it. First year we did it. Nina... Nina from H&H &H come and brought us some beers, didn't she? She did, yeah. yeah. She oh. did, yeah. If you're listening, Nina, <laughs> no hint. Where are they? <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't think there's anybody listening behind that bar. I've seen no movement. <laughs> I think if you're standing middle of this class, you still carry a lot of pride, don't you? Mm-hmm. 100%. When you look at the calibre of showmen that have just gone under Roger's eyes, Roger and Will's eyes, yes, it's it's ne it's never great to not be in the mix, but 
when you take a step back and you look at it holistically, look at your competitors. Mm. And that's the funny thing about showmanship as well and HYB in general. Like, yes, your competitors in this ring, but they're all friends as well, aren't they? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they would they would all help each other out. Yeah, and it's uh, yeah. There's a real camaraderie with these youngsters. Everyone helping each other out. A, and everybody it's working. A, it's, together. A, it's a strong point of the yeah. of the HYB movement. Yeah. And you see a lot of people go through HYB and they make contacts within the industry and they take careers on within yeah. the industry. And, and, and they'll make friends for life while they're in HYB. Yeah. And so when, 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 when they embark on the big wide world of dairying themselves as well, they've got all them contacts, they've got that support network to help them yeah, yeah. thrive within the industry. I think we're three lucky people. We've lived off the uh, tail of a cow for a long time and uh, not just with our jobs but also with our friendships mm -hmm. around the world, but not yep. ju just not just in the UK. We've been looking. I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure there's no other no other industry like it. I'm sure uh, no. accountants or solicitors or brickies or joiners. I'm sure they'd have the same. You know. We, we, yeah. Go go to a random country. We'll and, go to and Madison or people, you Toronto know. Winter Fair, a Swiss yeah. Expo, and have conversations at Swiss Expo with Canadians that you see once a year normally in and Canada. The, and, and, yeah, it's not just the people you know as well. Like everyone's just so approachable, yeah. aren't they? Like, yeah. yeah meeting them for the first time they'll always have a chat with you yeah but yeah we're just coming up to the final few uh final few placings here now just rogers tapping out the last last five or six yeah another few showmen just by the side of the ring there just getting them final Pointers from watching these senior showmen. And Crothers there, just in the padded jacket. Brent and Anne, big supporters of the show. Sponsors of the show, running the Colouring In competition, the UK Dairy Expo Colouring In competition. So if you've got young children and they're here tomorrow, make sure you stop by their stand, grab a tea and coffee with them and let your kids do some colouring in. Roger just walking between the two lines here now, just admiring the first first line of his provisional lineup. Some spectacle that is. Nice heifer there, Pat Spotty heifer of of Rory Scott's just off of just off of the screen himself, but nice heifer. Just a reminder that we have been running the uh, Global Connection sale all week and that has now culminated and Graham's just stepped off just to have a quick word with Glenn about uh, some possible transfers with uh, with heifers at the show. We'll keep you informed of, uh, of any of them so you can mark your catalogues at home. So Roger's just walking down the second line and making sure that he's happy. Some good heifers that goes through this Global Connection sale, isn't there? Obviously, some real good, good couple stuff. of class winners last year exchange yeah. hands yeah. in the Global Connection sale. So hopefully, we'll see a bit of that that same same level this year. One final look before he starts to make things official. Having a quick chat with Will and Evie Tomlinson, Tom, Tomlinson, the ring steward. And looks like he's ready to put some rubber to the road and make uh, make some things official. What? 
once once your granddaughter goes in the ring, he's coming up. Six two three, just pulling out there now. Then so Alice Caldwell, she's been given the nod. Peyton Robertson coming off in second at the moment. Going like a dream that first place calf. I think he's just going to line them from the top to the bottom. Give them plenty of room. Yeah, that makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, a lot of sense. Yeah, so you can see they're just stopping there in front of ring steward Ross Murray from Agri King. An experienced judge in his own right. Just helps having them ring stewards that know how a ring works yeah 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 100 percent. i do think i do think that's maybe been um what could i say a weakness maybe uh within the uk at national shows uh but it's some time to do it that's right yeah yeah but then i think it's up to the judges a little bit if you're a little worried that your steward's not quite au fait but how you want it you you give him a briefing before you start communicate yeah communicate. communications about everything about how you want to handle the ring Really, it's the judge's decision how they want to handle the ring. The steward can make their suge suggestions, but the judge should look and at the ring and see the best way that he can display the and any, any Anybody looking for tips on uh, on etiquette in the ring, the greatest on the planet, Murray Reisner in Canada. Yeah. There is nobody to match him. So we've got our own Murray now, Ross Murray. <laughs> <laughs> and that is where the similarity ends. <laughs> <laughs> Murray Reisner... On, on a different level. Yeah. Murray Rice never, never had a big bushy beard like Ross has got. <laughs> no, no, yeah. no. <laughs> but yeah, anybody, anybody, um, yeah, top guy. But uh, no, Murray, uh, our own Murray, is um, doing a pretty good job. I always think Martin Kepfer does a nice job as well at yeah. the European show. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, just spoke with Glenn. The, the uh, there was a, a sale running, an internet sale. Yeah, we were just talking about that as you were off screen. So what's what's the update? Yeah, and I think um, I think Glenn's real happy with it. Is uh, only brief uh, brief information about that. I think top price is about ten or ten and a half thousand. That'd be for one of the red uh, yes. red wagus, is that? For the, for the red wagus, that's correct. Um, so I had a calf in the sale, which is uh, which has been sold. So very happy with that. We had one for Dave Simpson that we've been looking after from Northern Ireland. That's sold. He's happy with that. Good. Um, so, no, it sounds like trade's been pretty good. We'll good. probably get a bit of an update later, will we, from Glenn of yeah, cars we, that yeah, have changed hands. And, and he'll, he'll no doubt have averages and that sort of thing. But it sounds like the sale's been uh, a success. A success. And, and uh, no, so that's... Uh, we were just saying there was lots of class winners that changed hands last year, so hopefully we'll see a bit of the same. Well, last year, I think I think it was uh, Horsley's had a calf last year that they yep. sold. Uh, and the, the um, To the Donalds, who purchased a calf and got reserve reserve champion at this show with it. Mm -hmm. I and mean, then it went on, and I think it's nominated for an All Britain. It is indeed. Which will be, um, which will be announced on Saturday night. That's another... Uh, something we forgot to mention so far, isn't it? Something yeah. we forgot to mention, yeah. Yeah, so we remember it... Uh, Come along to that as well. It'll be held here in the in the main ring. It's held right it? in the ring. I thought and I thought it was. I thought that went down really well last year. Sort of added to the atmosphere. You were sat at your table in the ring. Um, went and got your food. There was a big screen up. Then the Nancy All Britons and uh, the bar was doing a great trade. It was uh, yeah. It was a, <coughs> a great social event to be at. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But this young girl looks on fire with the job. Just pulling into first place. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I think we. Uh, the calf hasn't put a foot wrong. We can maybe just start running through the top six or seven then. So, yeah, our first place, Showman. Uh, so it's a, a huge, huge congratulations to 623, Alice Caldwell from Ayrshire. And then in second place, 626, Peyton Robertson. In third place, uh, from again, from Scotland, from Ayrshire, is, uh, is Rory Scott. And then in, uh, in fourth place... Must have been a last-minute swap there. Yeah, there must have been. There, yeah. Was there? yeah, she was. She was third, but she's yeah. Becky Hines in fourth, and then uh, Jack Wilson fifth, and then uh, just the top six. In fact, round up, round off the top six um, is uh, number six one nine, Megan Innes. Megan Innes. Megan Innes. And Megan was telling me this morning that she doesn't usually do handlers competitions. She thought she'd have a go today. Well, in that class, oh, yeah, when you sixth, I'm sure. I said to her, I said, Megan, I said it's going to be a big class. Just enjoy it. 
Yeah, if you're top Tanya, we're pretty really pleased. And she's spoiling, but now she's starting to worry because she's in the top six and she knows the pressure's on. Yeah, and Half is just having a bit of a moment yeah, as well, yeah. isn't she? Yeah. Go on, push, push. Go on, Megan. You need a bit of your dad's weight. <laughs> <laughs> Go out again, Meg. Go again, Meg. Go out there. Come on. She'll come in a minute. Let Jack get back in and then she'll slot straight in then. Sharing great levels of self awareness as well. She's worried that she's upsetting the other members, but she's not. Animals are animals. And if you're leading, you do have to be courteous to your fellow competitors, don't you? And that's something I put a. I think it's really important. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think we have had. Ross Murray just getting the pat there, so I think that's about right. So <coughs> nice to have a representative from HSBC now stood with uh, the presentation team behind our announcer, and he was. She'll just be presenting the uh, presenting the rosettes. Just this is good to see. You can see the judge there just bobbing his head above the calves, just giving them all a little bit of <coughs> feedback. Points to sharpen up, just to move slightly towards the top of the class in the future. Um, so he started. He started at number six. So he's working right the way down the line, isn't he? Giving everyone yeah. some feedback, and then obviously the top five will get it over the microphone. So hopefully we'll get some uh, some reasons from our judge now in a, in a few moments. See if we can get them uh, microphones hooked up to our system so we can hear you. Yeah, massive congratulations to every single competitor in the ring. This has not been an easy class. If you're standing in the top 10, then you'll be pretty chuffed here right now. Graham just getting another snap on his phone. Just getting the confirmation that the judge's mic is uh, all sorted. So him just let... Uh, let him and uh, Will just give some points of tuition to those people who won't hear any feedback on... Uh, well, it's, it's vitally important as a judge that he speaks to the person that finished very last. Yeah, and you can see Will started at the bottom and he's working his way, yeah. work way up. So um, it's good that every single person is going to get some feedback. We should so devote, go away and devote almost as much time to the person that finished last as yep. the person that finished first. Because no one's come in here wanting to do a bad job, have they? No. no. They want to do a good job, and we're going to get some reasons here now for our top five, I believe. Uh, we just knocked it into high gear here, and uh, give these uh, all these exhibitors a great round of applause. He's just really turned it on and really did a tremendous job, each and every one of them. So. It's uh, it's a thrill and an honor to uh, to judge such uh, uh, great young people that want to want to show cattle and be in the industry, and that's what this group really uh, really came to uh, came to the dance today and did just that. Uh, uh, really a fight at the top end, if you will. Um, just two great show people in my mind. Uh, Going to give the slight advantage to the to the exhibitor that wins the class today. Just that that overall total composure just really kept calm and she had a couple moments where things maybe weren't going her way or or the or the way that she was hoping they would go but she never lost her uh, composure and I really give her a lot of credit for that she just kept her cool when it gave her gave her that chance in a short line there and it really it really flowed together I love the head carriage the movement uh, just a little more fluid on the first one if you will I liked her body position just a little nicer than the than the one in second but it's fine lines it really pulled it together uh, second over third I think from the start of the class to the finish of the class the the set one and second maybe just had it together through the whole class if you will uh, the uh, exhibitor in third maybe just had a few moments where he got a little on the rail and things didn't quite flow together but uh, he never 
never gave up and that gave him that chance to, uh, to, to come into the top spot in a really, really, really competitive class. Uh, third over fourth, I give an advantage. I think for me, just, uh, and Will, just had a little more opportunity to set that heifer up a little more correctly, keep that top line down and keep that uh, levelness. Really just maybe corrected the faults on the heifer just a little bit, uh, a little bit more today uh, than the uh, exhibitor in, uh, in fourth. Fourth over fifth, uh, I give that advantage today. Just had that uh, a little more um, set up, a little correcter, a little quicker, a little sharper. Love the head carriage and the movement on the young uh, exhibitor in, in fifth, just that uh, fourth, the fourth one just had that little bit of sharpness, a little more correctness uh, all the way through from the start of the class to the end. Great job. Congratulations. Tremendous group of young people. Well, thanks, Roger. That's a great set of reasons. Big class to sort it out. And uh, congratulations to Ellis and uh, Payton. We'll see them back in the championship. So, uh, yeah, outstanding class of uh, young handlers. We now move on to the intermediate handlers. And again, a, a big class. So a big class of... Uh, so a big class of handlers about to enter the ring again. And So really interesting uh, getting into these handle classes now. Wow, some class up. Yeah, it was. And there's another big class coming in now, Graham. Yeah, just coming at the top of the screen. Looks like Tom Dennison leading him off. Maybe try and um, maybe try and pick a parent out at next class. I always think um, I've been in the position many a time, chewing your fingernails where your son, got, where your son or your daughter's in third and has just got moved up to second or vice versa, and it's, uh, yeah. it's an, an emotional roller coaster for yeah. parents ringside. We've actually got Robert Butterfield come up here for a bit of an interview, and his granddaughter's in this next class. Right. So, so uh, Butty, one of the one of the uh, unsung heroes of the, yeah. of the breed. Yeah, yeah. It'd be great to see him up here and have a little chat. Uh, he's brought uh, one milker and three calves, so uh, or three youngsters, three young heifers. So yeah, big question now. Yeah, has he brought the caravan? Uh, uh, I didn't ask him. I didn't. Ask <laughs> Maybe him. that's a question we can ask. Poor, with, poor Elaine. With, it, with oh. the sign on the door, don't come rocking. Don't come knocking yeah. when the caravan's rocking. So yeah. if Elaine, if, if <laughs> Elaine's listening to this, Elaine's in a little pain at the moment. She's got a bad hip. She's staying at home to do the work. And How's well, she done that? Well, every, well, I think it's a bit of wear and tear. <laughs> but I'll leave it to the people to question that for uh, to Robert and Elaine. Uh, I saw Elaine a little time ago, and uh, yeah, she's uh, she was saying how painful her hip is. So um, they've been on a lovely cruise down in uh, around Australia and uh, yeah, they have, New Zealand. Yeah. So uh, yeah, hopefully Butty will be here in a minute and good. Have a little interview with him. He's one of the stalwarts of this show. As long as he hasn't got to walk past the bar, because he might just duck in for a bit quick, quick swifty. No, no, I can see him behind. I can see him behind the screen. He's he's about to arrive. We'll get him mic'd up. Don't walk too far. So, uh, Robert, uh, you can't be seen on the screen, but you can, you can make a few comments. Are you on edge on this one because your granddaughter's going to be out in the ring? Well, I've, ne I've never been in the VIP area before at the show. <laughs> Usually been here. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's good to have you up here, Robert. Uh, so your granddaughter, is this the first time she's, she's been out in the handlers competition or not? Uh, it's the first time at this show. Yeah. She just did the junior handling at the Yorkshire show last yeah. year. And, yeah. then, and then at the Yorkshire calf oh. show. Okay. So... Uh, Another big, uh, big occasion today, Robert. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's, what's that then, Robert? Yeah, it's my birthday. It's your birthday, Robert. Yes. Yeah. Um, Happy birthday, uh, we, we, Butty. We, we, we've done a call to the to the uh, fire brigade in Carlisle. 
they said that if you're going to have to find that many candles, then you might have to go to other vi other towns and cities to find enough candles. Yeah, Is that right, just, Rob? We're just we're maybe just going to get him on there. Uh, yeah. yeah, they're getting the camera on now. Uh, how much puff you got? Uh, not enough for that. Happy <laughs> birthday, Rob. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we're just presenting Robert with a cake now, so uh, so so we can blow his candles out. Yeah. And there right, we are. Yeah. So we're, we're on screen now. So you can. So have you got enough puff for that, Rob? Well, it depends if I need me ask for thing first. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to blow them out? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what they're there for. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's all right. He's still got enough blow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, happy birthday, Rob. Thank you. Happy uh, birthday, uh, Bolty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And do you realise that you, you celebrate your birthday with another Robert? I do. Yeah. The uh, Robert Wills from uh, Cornwall. So oh, right. Willsborough. So, happy birthday, Robert, if you're listening. Yeah. And also, if in Canada, Tony Van Leith is birthday today as well. So, you've got three eminent breeders all with the same birthday. So, you'll be able to remember that. So, right. when, the, when uh, Prince, uh, King Charles sends you your uh, 100th birthday card in uh, 23, <laughs> oh, uh, in 33 years' time. <laughs> you, when did you go to about, school? Oh, yeah, but I missed that day. <laughs> maths was the, the day I missed. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. No, congratulations, Rob. So get back to your granddaughter. Your granddaughter's in the ring. Yeah. Is it giving you a bit of butterflies in your stomach? Are you? Oh, well. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just a barn hand now. I'll let them get on with it. <laughs> yeah. You start off like that and you finish like that, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Okay then. No. Thank you very have much. A, have a lovely day. Yeah. yeah. Happy birthday. Cheers, Butty. Butty, take your butt. Oh yeah, take your butt. <laughs> Meanwhile, the intermediate showmen are uh, just completing the first lap. You can wait to leave and go and eat that cake. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's having a good look at his cake now. Ruby Donald in the picture from Cumbria. And the red calf. Having a look at these handler classes, there's been some really nice calves coming around these classes, man. And they're going to be out later on this afternoon, I think. It's going to be some yeah, really yeah. good calf classes. Yeah, calf classes will be pretty strong, I think. Yeah, I do as well. So many entries have you got in this class? 14 in the class. Have you carried them, Alan, or not? Is that what there is? Yeah, 14, yeah, I yeah. think. I said, don't forget I missed maths on the one day. <laughs> if my old head teacher is <coughs> uh, listening in, oh, I hope she's not. She, never, she told me I would never come to nothing, and she's probably right. <laughs> Joseph Bourness, just moving out. Seth Davidson there, right on there. He's fighting with his calf a little bit. Let's get it straightened up. There we go. He's a keen young lad. He won uh, the vlogging competition last year, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully there weren't any expletives there, as his calf was just a little, just misbehaving a touch. Is he Lee, Mark Lee's daughter, just behind? Pretty good handler. I think she won here last year, I think, with one of our calves. Used one of our calves for handling and won a yeah. class. Poor little Lizzie had a little uh, escapade with a hockey ball. I believe so. Yeah, yeah. Hockey stick, I think. Oh, was it a hockey stick, was it? Yeah, yeah. All right. She's made of tough stuff, though. Must be an additional entry there, RB. Six, eight, seven. Yeah, six, eight, seven. Look like Hattie Hassel just going out of picture. So we are now with our first of our intermediate heats, ladies and gentlemen, just with the class B 
Another really good class of handlers here, though. When you look around the ring and the quality of these handlers. That could be Alison's finest there. Yeah. 647, Alexandra Beatty. Katie Bertram, 651. And of course, with the handlers, there's, uh, they can bring, obviously, bring their own calves. So you tend to find will be uh, Holsteins, Jerseys, Swiss, Red and Whites, a um, whole variety of breeds in the same class, as it's the handler that is being judged. There's Izzy Lee, competent young handler. Roger just uh, assessing the situation. Calf just roaching a little bit for her. Tom Dennison. Guy that's figured uh, figured at the top of the classes uh, on a regular basis. Be interesting to um, to speak with Will Horsley after this, just to see what he has picked up from uh, yeah. from Roger. Six three seven Hannah Shepherd just in your picture now. That calf likes chocolate biscuits. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. Who likes them more? <coughs> that calf or you? No, no, well, I like the chocolate biscuits, but 637, Hannah Shepherd's calf last night, she had a chocolate biscuit out of somebody's hand and she wouldn't settle so she had a second chocolate biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe it. A calf that fills on chocolate biscuits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doesn't like Haley, she <laughs> likes chocolate biscuits. Right, well. <laughs> yeah, really keen family there from Derbyshire. They a are, really, but... really down to earth keen keen family and if they're listening at home um granddad's a little bit of health uh, health problems yeah, Melbourne, and, yeah. and uh, get well soon granddad hope you're uh, hope you're fit and well soon so it looks like we're the first pull here yeah 643 it's the uh junior scott kyle scott can't believe it. i don't recognize him now without his mullet <laughs> on that yeah. young man uh had his head shaved at the, uh, he's been Britain. pulled in first at the All Britain and raised quite a considerable amount of money for cancer yeah, yeah. research. So, uh, Fair full player. marks to him. In second place, 6 4 1, Erica Gray. See Davy ringside chewing his fingernails. That's David's daughter, is it? Yeah. Is he leave 6 4 7, is it? Looks like her. Yeah. No, Alexander, uh, no, sorry, Alexander, Alexander Beatty. Yeah, sorry. sorry. Looking at the wrong number here. And then 687, Lydia Pegg. Yeah. In fourth place. 645, rounding off the top five. Hattie Hassel. Great tune. Jump around, House of Pen. <laughs> Good song. Yeah, like I said, if uh, if you do, if you want to come up and join us in the atmosphere, then definitely do. You've got loads of time on your side. You can probably find yourself a hotel room as well, lo fairly local, so you don't have to travel too far from the showground. You can be here bright and early and see the uh, see the milking cows too. Yeah. 
I understand I might even find out if Kirby snores tonight. <laughs> are you spooning? I think we're spooning, me and Kirby are sharing tonight, which is sharing's caring. Alan, first to sleep always snores. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh my god uh, everybody will know whether I got a good night's sleep in the morning I'll be, crank, I'll be cranky tomorrow <laughs> there is Alison Beatty ringside yeah Alison a lovely person top loss no Alison a lovely person oh so the third plate showman is Alison's daughter yeah. yes yeah, yeah, yeah. yes yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. yes and Alison, obviously, she's been a very successful showman in the past yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, 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 yeah. And owns a very good company in farm wardrobe. A great company, yeah. Who have uh, made all the gilets for... Um, Judge cows at their farm a couple of years back. Norris, a really, really nice herd of cows. A really nice herd of cows. And she's one of those people that nothing's too much trouble. You ever want anything done embroidered or anything like that? Nothing's too much trouble with Alison. Probably haven't mentioned our class sponsor, Cars Billington. Huge, huge, huge sponsors of uh, Borderway UK Dairy Expo. Um, their repertoire of uh, products and services is second to none in, uh, in Cumbria and even further afield. Mm. So thank you very much for everything that they do for not just Broadway UK Dairy Expo, but the wider dairy industry. Going down to the nitty gritty now. Alison, whose daughter I think is in third, worked for H&H &H for quite a while. She did, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there she is. <laughs> she was actually out to dinner with uh, Roger and myself and that last night. Right, yeah, yeah. And... Uh, <laughs> she knew we were talking about her. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Proud mother moment. Nice to see. Continuing a bit of movement in and out of the lines, just straightening these calves up. Yeah, and the feedback is now commencing. Will starting at the bottom, just giving them finer points of tuition and Roger starting at, uh, at sixth place and working down. So starting with Hattie Hassel, moving down the, down the line, Eleanor Atkinson. And you, you do get handlers. You just mentioned Hattie Hassel, uh, Izzy Lee. You know, they're, they're handlers that have, that have won at this level before. Mm -hmm. uh, they've, they've probably won at the, at the age group just slightly less. Maybe. Well, and they've come up. But ha ha Hattie Hassel was class winner at the Old Britain yeah, Cup Show, was she not? Yeah, 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 yeah. But it, I, and I think Hattie Hassel maybe got Sue Premier one year. Yeah, I think you're probably right. When Marie yeah, Eve judged it. Yeah, two years ago. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, I know they probably won't want to hear it, but it doesn't do them any harm not to win. You know, it conditions them that you know you can't win every time out, can you? You've got to put the effort in the is hard this a split, Is this a split class? Have we missed something here? Yeah. So yeah, heat yeah. number two. So nobody's filled to saying that is actually the first heat of this class. Okay, yes. So they, yes. Have, they have split the class. So heat one over and done with. Heat so two heat, now entering the ring. So six three two just coming in there now. Tory Wilson from uh, from Cumbria. 
So we've had the younger ones, and this probably the older ones. Is it coming in now? No, I think I think I think there'll be sort of every other in the catalogue. I think. Okay, I've got Tom you. Dennison was in a previous class six three three. Okay. Tory Wilson coming in this class is now six three two. That's probably a good way of splitting them. Yes, actually, yeah. yes, yeah. yeah. Yeah, six three four just coming in there now. Joanna Dale from uh, from Bigger in South Scotland. Six three eight there just coming into the ring, just coming through the through the tunnel. Just calf, just trying to do a bit of a bit of a runner. Andrew Watson. Six forty there now coming through the through the arch. Daniel Willis from Northern Ireland. Keen young guy. Followed by John Coldwell and six four two. Just uh, about to make the turn into the ring. So again, Cars Billington sponsoring this heat as well as the previous heat. So thank big thank you to them. Yeah, it was. Good. I listened to the um, I listened to the H and H podcast, the one and only, mm -hmm. um, on the way up yesterday. And the had a representative from Cars Billington. His name escapes me, but uh, good to hear him on the on the podcast. There's a few guests on there, didn't they? Had some yes. from Toy Toy Genetics. Toy Toy, Toy was on. Billington. Yeah, Will Horsley was Our on. Associate judge, yeah, Will. Yeah. So I know I. Uh, Always good to listen to uh, to a podcast if you're in the car for any longer than half an hour. It's have you got good, any have you, have you got any favourite podcasts, Graham? <laughs> the one and only from Harrison Etherington. Enough said. <laughs> Do you know what a podcast is, Alan? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. didn't, we do, didn't we do a podcast last year the three of us I think yeah we did I think they didn't we did. call on us this year no they didn't they, they didn't ask what our favourites were this year no they didn't they didn't call on us surplus to requirements yeah Alan still thinks podcast is something that uh, <laughs> makes you coffee in the morning <laughs> what podcast something to do with the garden pee yeah <laughs> 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 the pod went <laughs> Alan cod past what? what's a cod past yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr. Caldwell's calf decided to have a little bit of a spin ring. <coughs> Jersey calf coming into the ring there. Number six, five, four. Uh, Luke Betts from Cumbria, age 12. Nice stylish young half he has. And then... Uh, six, five, six. Yeah, young master Hodgson. Another previous class winner at uh, UK Dairy. Yeah, I think he is, yeah, yeah. Won, uh, won the, the junior showman quite a few years ago. Yeah, he has a bit of style. Good footballer as well, by all accounts. Yeah. Yeah, he is a good footballer. Everybody tells us that. Six five eight. Lexi Pattinson from Cumbria, just uh, on the British Frisian heifer, and I think this could be our last heifer just coming in. Six, eight eight. Oh, Jane Steele's here. She must be all set up. If she's spending time by the ring, it means she's ready to rock. She just got back from Australia. She's been out to see her sister. Son in herself. Yeah. She's all tanned, all ready to go for the year. So if you're listening down the lines, make sure that you do get... Uh, get your picture while your animal's Exactly, while you've got full. it clipped, washed, fed up. Yeah. Yeah. Don't wait for the queue tomorrow. Make sure your cow's got milk on it. Don't bring your milkers <laughs> from tomorrow in, in today to get... You'd be surprised what you can do. Jane, Jane, Jane's good at what she does, but she can't do that. Okay. <laughs> I'm wondering if I'd get her to take my photo and see if you can photoshop some hair on it. Like, you know. I do that all the time with my <laughs> pictures. <laughs> what, a fringe? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's my daughter there. No. See her down here? Not your daughter? Yeah. 
Is Hattie Jackson? Uh, oh, she's she on got, the. She got a drink in her she's hand. Got a drink in her hand. <laughs> That's because her surname's Kirby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, let's see if we can pass a sign. <laughs> she's not. Oh, she's giving us the thumbs up. <laughs> not sure. I'm not sure what that's about, but. Uh, I think she's going for a pocket. Like a good vet, she's going to ring you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> she's going to take our order, hopefully. Pop over to that bar, will you, Tash, and grab us three Border and Lakeland HYB yeah. ales. I think, yeah. I think we'll qualify for a... Do we not get a complimentary one of those tomorrow? You should do, shouldn't Maybe we? Maybe a complimentary one of those later on today. But, oh, it be, it it, but, but when it's a charity bar, we've got to... Yeah, yeah. Well, I suppose. Yeah, so. yeah, it's no, it's, we'll dip, we'll dip. It's, it's going to the Border and yeah, Lakeland yeah, rally so, yeah. fund. No, it's, so. a, it's a good cause. Yeah. And Roger's actually speaking at... Uh, our judge at the moment is actually speaking at their AGM on Monday night. Yes, so, I saw uh, that, yes. Yeah, it's that's good. And uh, what he told me is, you know, he's going to talk for about half an hour. And, uh, yeah, it's uh, about his life, about uh, all of his things through the uh, through his life, his uh, career, his showmanship. First time I met Roger was actually when he was showing uh, for Dr. David Shalak, who's a good friend of mine as well. He was actually the reason I joined Alta. Dave Shalak over there in Canada. Um, one of the main men at one point. Yeah, yeah, no, he's, st he's still one. Of, don't know, take it away from me. He's still one of the main men. Um, yeah, he was... Uh, he's still with Alta then, is he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, he's still at Alta International, it, Davis. He'd yeah. been there a long time. I think he's 75 now. And, uh, yeah, I, I've had a, uh, he's just a superman. Yeah. Superman. And he was probably the biggest encouragement for me to join Alta. Yeah, my mum and dad always spoke very highly uh, of him. He was so. just a, just a, he is a superman, not yeah. was a superman, he is a superman. And uh, yeah, he hired Roger to, to lead Acme Star Lily and uh, yeah, funny how your, your paths cross. Uh, Roger was over in August of last year and uh, we were driving back up from Cornwall, we've been down to see Willsborough, um, outstanding cattle we saw at Willsborough and uh, blew me down who should ring up but Dr. Dave and uh, yeah. Had a good chat with him on the phone with Roger, like so. Isla Arrell there, just at the bottom of your screens on the, the jersey, just playing up a little bit. She's seeing the exit and she wants to go. Another experienced young show person. Nice little write-up on... Uh, yeah, lovely write-up. On, on social media, jointly published by the Jersey Society and uh, and Border and, uh, Borderway UK Dairy Expo, so... Nice to see the Jersey Society yep. supporting the show as well. Um, obviously have Holstein UK as mainline sponsors, but the Jersey Society have been very supportive as well. Isla's done very well in the past. Mm -hmm. Mum's a good showman, father's a good showman, so you would expect Isla to just carry on the mantle. And obviously all the, uh, well, a lot of the, the Arrow family animals reside at First Look Farming, and yep. obviously they've got staff there as a tutor as well for, for Isla so yeah. uh, just a reminder that the first look will be having a uh, an elite consignment sale obviously some of the best animals at first look will sell some of the animals that are rented in the show tomorrow yeah. I think James is uh, coming on tomorrow is he on the live stream Steph, uh, Steph, oh, Steph is, is. Yep. Yep. And, oh so we uh, get the glamour yeah and uh, we'll get uh, they're getting some guest consignments as well from breeders here in the UK but uh, but also some really exciting embryo lots from Tim Abbott's Board right. of View um, program in uh, in America so Good. I was uh, very lucky to meet Tim Abbott uh, a year ago in November out in Louisville and what a real gentleman he is he's yeah, he's tremendous another man that's just there yeah. and supportive of the whole industry just, around just, the world it's a super guy to, to have a chat to and everything he was just a super guy 654 there the jersey just uh, going off the screen Luke Bat. 656 six there, just being looked at by Roger now. Yeah, Roger just having a quick look at Matthew Hodgson's car. British Frisian heifer there of Lexi Pattinson's just uh, behind the red heifer. Of, uh, of Ollie Harrison's. That'll be every car and every showman. Had a little bit of time with Roger now. Doesn't take long just to 
to assess these individuals and compare and contrast them before liaising with his associate and uh, making up a plan. Isla Arrell's calf deciding that the public, general public looked really good. Yeah. Just trying to chew some sleeves. Mm. Oh. It's just not behaving for her. Nothing more annoying yeah. than an animal that's uh, not playing the game. And jerseys are buggers for it, aren't they? When they get it in their head, they want to do something. You... A jersey that's on its game takes some beating. But a jersey that gets a little bit about them. But one thing I'd say about Euler, she hasn't got stressed with that calf at all. No, she's quite chilled out. Yeah. She's um, she's probably she's been she's been there and experienced things like this before. She yeah. she'll be a little bit deep down. She'll be frustrated, but she's not yeah. showing it, which is no. the main thing. No. And that jersey calf's not giving up on her either. And what have we got here now? So I just missed that first pull. Six three two. Six three two. Satori so Wilson there is wheeling round into first position. Six three eight. Six three eight coming in second place. That is Andrew Watson from uh, from Scotland. Yeah, Muir. Scotland South. Six forty. Six forty in third, is it? So six forty, Daniel Willis from Northern Ireland. Six four two. And six four two coming into into fourth position is John Coldwell. Again, his, yeah. uh, uh, big si big sister's just yeah. done well and he's in the mix here now in the top five. Nicely in the top five. Who's going to be our, our last contender of the top five then? Six, five, eight, is it? Mm. Our British Frisian showman, Lexi Pattinson, finishing the top five. Nice effort, already got a freeze brand. Quite a nice effort that freeze, you know, actually. Yeah, no, no, just... Six, eight. Be good to see the... We have our British Frisian judge, Mr. John Cowser. Yeah, how common? Yeah. How common her how common how common are you? Yeah. <laughs> how common up there in uh, just outside of here? Kilmarnock. Really experienced judge in Mr. Yeah. Cow's a scene yet. A few heifers not quite behaving as well in this class as they have in previous classes. Just not so helpful for the handlers, but they've all been very credible handlers like not losing their control. Just three showmen left to get pulled into position now, and then uh, that will be heat two of this class concluded. As you see that uh, Roger's just pulled four at the top, he's waiting to pull one out of the remaining. So it's not all over yet. Those handlers stood at the other end of the, of the line. He's kept four and he's left a gap so they okay. can move them around like he did the last time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so there's still there's still handlers that could move up into that top five yet. So. And what's happening after this then? Are the winners Are they, from uh, this and the winners of the previous so, so the five, come in? These five and the five from the previous, I presume, will come in to have a fight out. Love a bit of a fight out. We have been wrong before though, Rich. Mm-hmm. Tom Horsley in the gateway down there. Watching his brother in the ring. Yeah, so I just probably mentioned their sale as well, obviously, in April. Yeah. Woodcat and Wolfer selling some elite uh, elite heifers and milkers. Two of the young, nicest young lads that come out of Cumbria. Three. Three. Yeah. Three. Oh. Tom as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well.
Roger just going back to con, uh, have a conflab there with Will. He's just gone to Isla Arrow and out oh, six five zero. Oh. oh six five zero oh, is it? Maisie Ord and Matthew Hodgson, both. Walking in front of the row, it's brought them down. For surely they would go. He told them which way to go. Okay. The judge is always right. So the judge has told him where he wanted them. So. Tori Wilson just uh, leading off. So how we see it, we think the first five or six are going to stay in, and the others will leave the ring, and then they'll be joined by the previous. They'll be joined with the fir first previous five or six will come into the ring, and then they'll fight it out for this intermediate championship. Yeah, so 12 coming into the ring to compete for the 12 rosettes. Kindly sponsored by Cars Billington. So just to remind you who they were, 641 coming into the ring, Erica Gray on the black heifer on the screen now. Next one is Cole Scott. Oh, no, they've, they've gone on. They're putting them back into a number order, I no, think, are they? Six, four, one, then six, oh, yeah, three, then, two. Yeah, no, they're not. I think they're, they're doing one, miss one. Yeah, so they're putting six, uh, six, four, three into the ring now. Second place from that previous heat. You so, Kyle Scott from come, uh, from Scotland. He's just coming into the picture now. And then he gets followed by six, three, eight from uh, from the second heat. Andrew Watson. Andrew Watson. Again from Scotland. Scottish people and uh, and showmanship is like Irish people and jockeys, isn't it? There is some good good showmen up in Scotland. Well, I hope uh, we're having a bit more luck at tipping the tipping the winners at Cheltenham. <laughs> <laughs> and six four seven following on. So six four seven. Just to remind you who that was. That was Alexandra Beatty, Alison's daughter. So for a Gloucestershire, man, a Gloucestershire man like the, me, Cheltenham would be probably a big important thing and Cheltenham is going on at the moment. So uh, I've just been downstairs to print off this list and they're watching uh, Cheltenham uh, in the office, they? in H&H &H office. Uh, right. yeah. So uh, yes, Cheltenham going on at the moment. There won't, be, uh, there won't be a space left in Cheltenham this evening with all the uh, Irish over for their uh, Paddy, for St. Patrick Day. <laughs> St. Patrick Day's uh, party tonight. So... Uh, just on the screen there, 6.40 from the previous heat. Daniel Willis from Northern Ireland. Nice family. I've been to been to their farm a long time ago. It was nice to see. Oh, bloody hell, I thought there were celebrations. Oh, no, no, no. Alan's opened the box of celebrations to reveal some really nice-looking brownies. So, uh, yeah, I've got my mother on making brownies. So if anybody's listening in, my mother's probably one of the best brownie makers. If, uh, Ooh, nice. if if James Evans, future dreams uh, jerseys is around, these are being hidden away from him if he's managed to get up here because he, all he does is crave on my mother's brownies. So uh, we're Six, keeping these to ourselves. Six five three, just going off the screen there, on the red heifer, Ruby Donald from Cumbria. And six four two, coming in behind there, John Coldwell, obviously the brother to the. Winner of the of the senior showman on the big black heifer, just showing her as uh, 
the rear view. That's Izzy Lee just coming into the, uh, into the shot now. I've seen Anne Lee about, but I don't see anything. I've seen Mark yet. Mark's busy at home working. Working? Well, so he says it is. It's on his phone most of the time. And then 6.50 is uh, Maisie Ord. Again from the second heat. And finally, uh, Lydia Pig. Just 12 years old coming into the ring. And that's uh, then followed by Matthew Hodgson. And that's the, that's the full lineup. The full 12 contenders. If you are watching from home and uh, you want to get in, join in with the conversation, then feel free to message myself, Alan, or Graham through uh, WhatsApps, texts, Facebook Messenger. Um, but also feel free to uh, drop some uh, some comments and messages. So I've just had a message from Stuart Williams down in uh, Southwest Wales. Hope you're well, Stu. They've got a, actually a school visit there at the farm today, and he's saying he's just been out it showing on the TV live stream today, and uh, talking to the youngsters about showing oh, animals. And gosh, the, yeah. I hope I didn't say anything inappropriate. No, no, I don't think so. And uh, so, uh, yeah, great, great call out, Stu. He's great to, to bringing people from the towns to the to the countryside and explaining about where the food comes from, talking about animals and everything else. And Stu does a great job down there in South West Wales, and. Uh, yeah, he's a real advocate for getting people more up to date with what's going on in the farming world. And he spoke very well the other day in Cardiff on the steps of the Parliament there in Cardiff, the Senate, and uh, yeah, fantastic. The so Dawn Corrin uh, down there and Lisa. I presume you're listening in because you just sent me a photo of me and Butty at the Cornwall show having a few beers on the uh, Cornwall Holstein stand. That's deflammatory there, uh, Dawn. So uh, it's all going on quite well. Some really cracking handlers out. This is going to take some sorting out now. The calf makes a wrong move now. It could be in the chances. Our judges just having a bit of a chat about what to do here. Super class of handlers though, all the way through them.
Thank you very much to the team down in the pedigree office, supplying us with all of the information that we need so we can uh, help you guys follow along from home. I don't think uh, even the exhibitors realise how much work goes into the background of a, of a show like this. You know, correlation of all the entries and then all the changes because if some farmers enter, then they want to change them on the Wednesday. I was told Wednesday the last day. I, I think some snuck into uh, early, early Thursday morning, even the when, the, morning when, the, yeah. when the lorry loaded. Um, yeah, take your hats off to the to the to the ladies and gents that are in in the office staff behind the show and getting it all on. Just the guys also that put the rings together and do all the outside work. This is a real graft to get this show on. It's not just one person; it's a whole team. And without the Border and Lakeland team or Borderway Market team, it uh, it just wouldn't go with the show. So this is taking a little sorting out. And we're running a little late. Wow. I'm sure we can forgive our judge for, yeah, yeah. for the, 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 these big classes. Big classes. I think we're getting a initial line up here now. This is like a mini championship in itself with the top six coming from well, effectively two classes. I know they're all one class really, but Lady Graham Kirby just grabbing us a cup of tea. He's, he's a top man, that team man. Top man. We, so did, we, we did send a message to Tash, but there were no drinks came up. Yeah, no, we must have just drank still, them all instead. We, we noticed, we noticed that Eamon Marhan, and uh, I'm not sure where it's Messer Wilson stood at the bar. Propping it up. Yeah. So just to run through provisional lineup. I know things can change, but currently in first position we have number 647 who is uh, Alexandra Beatty. I can't see Alison now. I think she might have has she fainted. <laughs> she around the back having an anxiety attack. I don't know. She was, she's moved from her usual sort of like uh, place. Then in second place, we've got currently young Kyle Scott. No, sorry, third. that's a lie. That's oh, he's third. in third. 632 in second place, Tory Wilson from Cumbria. Then Kyle Scott. And then we've got Andrew Watson in fourth place at the moment. In fifth place, number 687, young Lydia Pegg. So we have Ireland first, England second, Scotland third and fourth. Just need Wales now, don't we? Mm. Where's Lydia from? Mm. <laughs> We're not sure. Doesn't say. We, we could have, we could have name, with Kirby, who's, who's head of North. <laughs> she's. Uh, I don't know where she's from, but she's doing a fantastic job. She's done a that super job Lydia with that calf ever since she came in. That calf. She's got a big future ahead of her. I yeah, think. Yeah, no, no, she's doing a wonderful job with that calf.
greenie down at the bar. Oh, yeah, the homeless chap down by the bar is uh, none other than Mr. Richard Green. <laughs> propping it up. Looking a bit scruffy. You can't say that. <laughs> oh, some fantastic young showmen here. You can see on the screen now, Roger just giving the, the point out. Alexandra's been pulled first at the moment. She'll uh, be pretty pleased with uh, with that if she can maintain that position. And uh, I know one other person who 100% will be, and that's her mother, Alison. 6-3-2's been pulled second. Yeah, again, cool as a cucumber is, uh, is Tori Wilson from Cumbria. Just pulling there now into... Uh, the second lineup, Alexandra Beatty, Tori Wilson, Lydia Pig off into third position. Alan, she's done a super little job with that calf all the way time. You know, stylish even, little fuck of that calf yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, but just to, just the way that she's handled that calf. That calf's chewing its curd. It, she's not hassled the calf. The calf's just come through lovely. And when you're cool with your calf, yeah, your calf yeah, will be cool with you. Yeah. And she's concentrated. She's watching the feet. Look at her pulling to the line now. She's watching those feet. And then eyes back on the judge. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's done a super little job with that calf. And then uh, Mr. Watson getting the nod above Mr. Scott. Kyle's calf just didn't settle in that, that provisional lineup. Just wouldn't, wouldn't let go. Wouldn't, you know, I'm not sure it's just fighting its head a little bit. And it's a little bit more on edge than... Uh, Sometimes the other cars. Sometimes the, you see that now, just having a bit of a yeah. spin. Sometimes these youngsters just got to realise, give them a bit of chain, just let them have a little bit of head. Like sometimes they just don't, they just don't want to fight anymore. So I think that uh, that's is, his top five. Is his top five for now? Yeah, and they're just talking through it now. Just having a quick check, just to make sure what they have come up with is is agreeable to both our judge Roger Turner from. Uh, He's a Canadian in America, isn't he, as Roger? Yeah. So he's born in Canada. Um, showed all the dairy cows. Actually born not far on a farm, stead just down the road from Hanover Hill. Port oh, right, Perry. really? Yeah. yeah. I only found that out last night when we were yeah. talking at, yeah. at dinner. Um, yeah, and, and Roger's like been so in the been industry a long time. He's been around elite cows for a long, long time then. Yeah. But yeah, no, I think uh, he just caught up with... Associate Judge Will Horsley from uh, Woodcat Holstein's here in Cumbria. And I think they are agreeable that that is going to be their top five. Yeah. So, And what a top five. Like, you know, they, they've, they've really had two classes to go. This is a mini... That's a, a, long, a long time. That this this is a mini championship. Wearing. And they've kept these calves going really well. Like, you know, they've just been at ease with their calves. And that Lydia Pig's calf is still chewing its cud. Mm -hmm. Still loving it. You feel, sorry, you feel sorry for some of the guys that have been in the second heat, really, because yeah, yeah. they went straight from the second yeah. heat straight into this yeah. class. And that's actually what Alexandra's done. Yeah, He's exactly. gone straight from the second heat into yeah. this. Yeah. So a calf, the, calf the calf's been in the ring in game mode for a long, yeah. long time now. Yeah. yeah. The UK's equivalent of Murray Reisner just <laughs> pulling them into, into their final position, into their... Rosette receiving position. He'll have a new nickname by the time he's finished. I know, yeah. The Roser. So we'll uh, welcome to the ring a representative from our sponsors, Cars Billington. Cars Billington being class sponsor and mainline sponsor for Broadway UK Dairy Expo alongside Holstein UK, our Breed Society, CIS, the Cattle Information Service, HSBC UK, the... The, one of the UK's leading banks and huge supporters of agriculture. And then, of course, last but not least, Harrison and Hetherington themselves, who were the visionaries of this event. Yeah. Now in its 12th year. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. Join in with the conversation. Text me. Text Alan. Send us a message. I think we've got a few hundred people watching from home at the moment and 
we always know that we can get to, to numbers in the thousands. So thank you very much for taking the time to join us and hope you can spend the rest of the day with us and also into tomorrow where we will have uh, some of the UK's finest milking animals going under the expert judges, uh, expert eyes of our judges, Mr. John Cowser, yep. Mr. Uh, Dan Bacon, and Mr. Ben Govert. So you, might, you might have heard a whooping and a holler in yep. there, but that is the class being confirmed. And, and there's Alison just come back in the shop. A huge congratulations to uh, Alexandra Beatty there. Yep. Alison's got a phone out. Yeah. Doing, video, a bit of, doing a bit of video in there in, in the background. Yeah. She's so chuffed. Six, eight, seven. This is Miss Lydia Pagan. Oh. Fourth is exhibit number six, three, eight. This is Miss And taking nothing away, really, from no. number number six, three, two, Tori Wilson. No. The expert showman that is Lydia Pagan, third. Yeah. She's done a wonderful job. She really should be proud of herself. She's done a wonderful job to be in there. 12 year old. Yeah. No, 12-year-old. There's 15-year-olds in this class. Yeah, she, she'd be one of the youngest competitors in there. Like, She'd be one of the youngest in there. Mm -hmm. To put it into perspective, Tori Wilson's the oldest member of uh, of this class, aged 15. Yeah. So, yeah, no, tremendous, uh, tremendous effort from absolutely every single competitor in this ring. And, uh, yeah, just Rod, Roger the judge there, just... Be really interesting to hear his reasons now on this. Yeah, uh, presenting wonderful presenting class. That, presenting that first place, Rosette. Yeah. There we are. We see it on the screen there, Alexandra and, and, and Judge Roger Turner. It's actually a really nice heifer that actually yeah. as well. No, it's just nice heifer. I'm not sure where it came from, but it's a nice heifer. We'll see her. We'll see her a little later today yeah. when uh, Ben Govert takes the middle of the ring. But here's Roger. Here's Roger. Well, another beautiful class. Obviously, we had a little, uh, had a quite a number of these ones, so we kind of split them up and uh, rolled in with a couple top groups here. But uh, when uh, when these uh, when they all came back out, we were we were certainly very excited to see these uh, top dozen uh, kind of all put it together and little things separate uh, little ones at the top. And I think there's just a there's just a fine, 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 outstanding group of uh, of show people here. Uh, uh, the show person to start the class today, just uh, really that balance, that unison, that symmetry. They move so fluidly together. It's uh, it's like they've been practicing this uh, uh, quite a number of days. They just had head carriage, that balance. Just had an advantage today, just just sharpness of getting that heifer set up, just a little sharper and a little less movement today than uh, the show. Another great, great group of show people here. I just thought that overall head carriage was a little tidier today on the second over the third uh, and just kind of snapped it together just a little sharper, but uh, certainly a young, uh, a young show person uh, in, uh, in third. Got a big heifer and just does a totally a great job. That heifer's chewing her cud and uh, looks like they're kind of friendly to each other because I tell you what, they really get along well. But again, in that third one over the fourth one was control. The third just had that a uh, little more ease of control, kept, her heifer, kept the heifer off the rail a little bit than the show person in, uh, in fourth today, and really got him set up just a little sharper. Fourth over fifth, uh, kind of comparable kind of uh, show people. Again, uh, I think there's a head carriage and that uh, presentation overall, his body movement towards the heifer was just a little more correct than the one following in fifth, but uh, wow, great group, congratulations. Great set of reasons, Roger. Um, super, super class of uh, young handlers. Proud, you know, those top five have done an excellent job. Really, really outstanding job. We move on to the next class now, which is the uh, junior class, 11 years and under. And we have another big class here. So uh, if they're all forward, I think we've got some in the region of 22 or 24. Twenty-eight entered, so they're all in the class. It'll be an absolute phenomenon again. These these uh, young hander classes really well supported today.
So as the last few exit the class from the from the cl intermediate class, the junior calves are already entering the ring. I'm sure Mr. Kirby went off to fetch us a cup of tea, and it's obviously he's, he's making the tea bags as well. Yeah, I think he's gone to China, hasn't he? <laughs> I thought it was India where the tea come from. I thought it was China. Is it? Is it China? I don't know. Is it India? I swear to. Well, if you know, if you know at home, if anybody call in and tell us where where tea <laughs> comes from, all we know is it comes out of a out of a tea bag. God, we sound as bad as people that think yeah. milk comes from yeah, the yeah. supermarkets, don't yeah. we? Yeah. Yeah. Where did your milk come from? Oh, the supermarket. Yeah, supermarket. So we've got some uh, some young showmen coming here now that uh, have been eagerly watching. The so what's the youngest one? Actually, we've got a we've got a, a four year old coming in the ring as well. Greg a few, few four year olds. Is there two? It's four, three, three, three four year olds. Nancy Lockhead, Florence Airy, and Gregor Laird. So. Uh, so just, just at the bottom of your screen there now is uh, on the little white heifer is number 662. That's Jack Howie. Jack Howie from Stranra. Nice little uh, white heifer there just in the bottom, middle of the bottom of the screen. What the hell? So you don't, you can't see this, but I've actually got a support crew for six seven four. I've been asked to wear this while he's in the ring. Kane Ogden. I'm sure it's six seven yeah six seven four Kane Ogden. He's uh, he came and gave me this because he's worried that I've got no hair and he's got plenty of hair. So he's actually given me a mullet to wear while he's in the ring. <laughs> God, you look a spanner. <laughs> well, at least I've put it on. Doesn't look natural seeing no, you no, with no, hair. No. I've not had hair since I was twenty. You can see, you can see, oh, you can see him on the screen actually now. Oh. Pulling his, pulling his wig off. Here we are. Donald Trump's watching. We know where your fucking wig is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's enough. Of that it's making me itch. <laughs> I just realised I swore there as well, so excuse <laughs> my language. <laughs> oh, you bad boy. That's what happens with live telly. So Dawn Corrin has sent uh, a message through from down there in Cornwall, explained to us you know, what we think of the skills of the young handlers. Are very much, you know, I think they're on a, on a pretty good par now with, with the world now, our young handlers. Um, what's your thoughts, Rich? Well, showmanship was invented by the Canadians, wasn't it? Yeah. And we've got a Canadian judge in the middle of the ring here. Yeah. I think the proof's going to be in the pudding when we get that man up yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. And we ask him his thoughts. Yeah, very good point. We've heard his thoughts on each individual class, yeah. and they sounded really, really impressive. So mm. it'll be good to get that wash-up meeting done up here in the commentary box with Roger at the end of the showmanship to find out what his thoughts are. Mm. Um, but from my perspective, I think we've got some absolutely phenomenal young showmen um, in the making here in front of us and uh, even in some of the older aged categories some uh, competitors that have shown a lot of skill ability um, and also knowledge of their calf and like Graham was saying before they knew the strengths they knew the weaknesses yep. of their calves they yep. put practice in at home and they've done a fantastic job of, of, of showing them off today mm. So I think we're getting near to all the ca all the youngsters in the classes now. Hunter Weatherup just went through the picture. Let's have a look, see what some of these calves are here. So, so that's Kane Ogden the, in the little red calf. Oh, here, oh, here we are. Here we go. Last, last one to the ring. I think the last one to the ring, is it? Yeah, number 684. 684, Florence, Florence Airy. Airy. Last time I saw her dad, I was in Switzerland, actually. Oh, there's somebody else following in behind. Oh. With a Swiss 686. Anna Simpy. There's a bit of a rodeo going on in this top corner with these young ones. It's just 
not probably just as skilled as uh, some of the older members of the class, but got all of the enthusiasm. Hang on, let me move that for you. Graham's back from India or China or <laughs> wherever tea comes from. Coffees. No. Are you on a coffee? No, need a tea. <laughs> so he said he could. I'll, I'll have a coffee. It's fine. He couldn't forget. Yeah, he sent him off. It's not. It's teas. not. It's not a hard order. Two teas and a coffee I for Graham. I can't, I, yeah. Only milk. None of us are sugar. <laughs> I'll tell you, a cow I saw 15 years ago, but I can, that's a coffee. And he still fucked it up. I messed it up. Hey, we saw him giving Alison a bit of a, a kiss. Coffee. Yeah. Cheers, mate. Yeah, we'll see you go over there giving her a kiss. <laughs> so we've got, uh, is that Hunter Weather up there? Just on the screen? Just, we're just disappearing from the screen. <laughs> no sugar. Oh, and we said no sugar, and he still brought about three, six kilo of sugar. <laughs> <laughs> and some spoons to mix it with. Did you order uh, 70 straws of the, of the best CMEX Holstein sex ball? <laughs> oh, he came back for that <laughs> yeah, one. Yeah, exactly. He, he had his order book. He, he had when his he got to semen order. Yeah, he had an order book straight out. <laughs> he had the order straight book. <laughs> yeah. Maybe he does the same. Someone rings him for 50 straws. You did say 70, didn't you? <laughs> 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 hey, he added a zero to it, 500. Upsell. Got my decimal point, point yeah. in the wrong place. Roger there, just having a look at these youngsters. Big age variation. Probably the biggest, it's the biggest age variation of all the classes. Yeah, with showman and calves, I would say. Yeah, yeah, four to 11. A couple of calves in here, not long off milk, maybe still on. And some nice... Nice heifers as well, a little bit older. Florence Aries telling her calf it's naughty. Six, seven, one there. The white heifer just doing a bit of a pirouette is yeah. Rosie Hodgson. And six, seven, three behind there on the jersey, Chloe Rudd. Just at the bottom right hand corner of your screens now. Young Master Ogden on the red and white. Just behind. Just yeah, so, so, so Kane gave me my, uh, gave my, me, me, me mullet to wear because he was worried that my head might get cold. In, uh, that, was, in the... that was Oggy that gave you that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe so. I, and have you worn it? Oh, yeah, no, put it on, put it on. But it, it, feels, it feels funny when you're not had hair. Do we have photographic people. evidence? <laughs> to be fair, he was on the screen and everything with it, yeah. <laughs> when you have... Uh, when you have uh, 35 years, you've not had any hair on the top of your head. It's, it, it gets a bit ticklish. I just saw him downstairs. He was telling me the whole story. Yeah, of, yeah. Of, uh, coming with the wig, I thought it was a good idea. Yeah. According to Rich, so I looked a tool. Yeah, spanner. <laughs> spanner was the word. <laughs> I don't envy Roger on this class. No, he's got his work cut out. It's uh, it's very hard when you have got that spread of age and experience, because yeah. you want everyone to have a fair chance. Yeah. And when you've got that mixture of ability, it's hard to, she won't to give compare it. and contrast. Look at it. Six eight four, just having a bit of a hissy fit there in the top corner of the ring. You can just about see on your screens. Dave Aries' daughter. Yeah, Florence. She's stuck she, old. She, she, has, she hasn't let it go. She won't give in. Good lass. Got a bit of strength about her like a dad. <laughs> Holding on. Who's got a pull here, RB? Uh, six, six. Six, three. six, six, three being um, is Ruth Allison from Fife. Which is a weather up. All oh, right. Descendant. Who's pulled second? This is second one coming in here. Six, eight, four, is it? Six six four. Six six four. Mr and Mrs. Hudson, ringside. Jessica Burrough. From Cumbria in second place so far. Six six seven's been pulled third. Six six seven Georgia Hines. So sister of Becky. Yeah. Yep. Nice to see her over, having a bit of fun. Probably with a panda beast. Oh, 
Always giving is Molly. Top corner, 6-6-0. Six, 6-6-0 six, oh. six, six, oh, coming into fourth position here now. Bethany Fisher from Cumbria. Again, keeping hold of that heifer. Little red heifer, little sweet red heifer in fourth position. Calf at the top has been pulled. 6-6-1. Six, 6-6-1 six, one. Six, six, one being Jonathan Atkinson from Lancaster, aged 11. On that black stylish heifer just coming in, uh, to the right-hand side of your screen now. Making the turn and pulling into fifth, fifth position. I think uh, young Master Lee may have just Archie got... In sixth. Got the nod for sixth. Keeping his eyes on the judge, which is good to see. Doing a nice job of uh, controlling and handling that heifer. Seventh, number six, six, five. Kaylee Airy. So just a reminder that uh, this is the junior showmanship class aged 11 years and under and is kindly sponsored by CIS, the Cattle Information Service. Nice to see uh, quite a few representatives of CIS and their parent company, Holstein UK, here today. Directly below us. Yep. yep. We bang our feet hard enough. We might yep. Bits of plaster might fall on the red. Just pulling the rest of these young showmen now up into line. Putting a secondary line in. Bring Stuart E.V. Tomlinson just uh, lining them up there now. Roger just uh, communicating what the plan of attack is going to be for the rest of these youngsters. Peeling them all in, I think, in uh, in order. Come on, Kane, pull in. Yeah, so Ruth Allison will be a niece of Brian Weatherup. Oh, right. So it's probably a, a park end or less make half that... Uh, She's got the good fortune to be working with. Obviously put on a lot of work at home because it's uh, yeah. really well behaved, isn't it? So. Yeah. Roger, just having a quick look down there. The first lineup. This is where uh, his time will be concentrated a little bit more, just to make sure that he gets the the top few places right. Before then, looking at the secondary lineup to make sure he's happy with that. Will's just uh, the associate judge, Will Horsley, just helping get these last few places places made.
A little bit late to the party, but now I've got access to the Borderway UK Dairy Expo Facebook page. So if you would like to send any comments or thoughts in that you'd like to share with us and get involved in the conversation, then please do so. And if you're watching from home, you'll probably uh, want to check out ITV a little later today because uh, we did have um, have them present this morning having an interview with Glenn on ITV Borders. I've heard he's on Naked Attraction next week. <laughs> and then Love Island in the summer when he's had a... <laughs> Glenn is on Naked Attraction. So I believe. Yeah. What's his set designer? <laughs> <sighs> oh my God. Well, there's more people at the bar now. Obviously, it's turned turned past. Up, no, it's not quite past two. They're they're in. It's too deep already at the bar. Yeah. Unheard of for young stock there. I know, yeah. yeah. I would say. Your your mate was at the bar just now. Greeny. Green. Looking very dishevelled. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's left the bar though. He likes a he likes a real ale. He's he's left the area. Yeah, yeah. We thought someone had wandered in off the streets to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> I think C Mex should put his commission bonus up a bit so he can afford a razor. <laughs> Super Trump. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Will having a final look down the back and Roger looking around the front just to make sure they're happy and uh, I think we're going to start seeing some uh, some confirmations made and some final placings being pulled now. So just Roger having a quick chat with the uh, ring steward, just getting him in position and away we go. So young Miss Allison being pulled out in first. 667 has gone into second at the moment. Georgia Hines, yeah. That's a nice little boost for her. I think she flew in uh, flew in last night, I think, into Manchester. Good. Archie's moved up a place. Archie Lee's moved up to fifth. There's been quite a bit of movement in this class. But uh, Ruth is marching on. She wants to get that animal positioned in first and the rose up in her hands and away she goes. She's doing a great job of leading that heifer. You can just see her just there on the screen now. Mm. It's a nice heifer as well. It is. She's long and stylish and it's a nice heifer. Black and silky. Good feet and legs. Yeah, yeah, nice heifer. Nice balance of the heifer too. And she's done a good job showing it. It's not just a good calf, she's done a good job showing it. Stands well too. Check out my eyesight now, see if I can see its tag. I was going to say, not from here, are <laughs> I think I've, I think I found it. You think you found it? Well, I can see the last three digits. I just need to find it on here now, so I can tell you what it is. Keep putting the search engine. It's not that. Did you just make a <laughs> noise? Yeah. <laughs> Let me see your tag. Standing seven seven three. Is it five seven three? Oh dear. God, you've got good eyes. 
I've got four eyes, haven't I? Now we're going to give up on that. Youngsters just uh, making their way out. They've had a bit of fun, leading their halfers around. Great learning curve for them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think Evie's made a little friend. And we're going to get some results, I think, from our judge, Roger Turner. Uh, so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the results are in for the uh, junior showmanship task. We just start off, please, by giving all these exhibits a huge round of applause. Hey, great. Sounds like somebody brought their fan club today. That's pretty cool. Hey, a great group, and uh, certainly, uh, as you were very well deserved, uh, just a tremendous uh, group. These, uh, I just love it when these, uh, these young people got a lot of fight and a lot of gumption in them, and they never give up, and that's, that's uh, exactly what this great uh, group all the way down the line did. But uh, certainly the top ten and these top five, uh, just uh, Will and I just... Uh, really feel that they just really sorted themselves out. They just little things that separate them. Uh, the first show person today just had that, that overall quality, that head carriage, just had a slight bit more control of the heifer throughout the whole class, that ease of setting it up and that uh, just a little faster getting it set up and just was able to hold it together just a little bit more. Uh, but it's not sake taking anything away from the uh, show person in second. Uh, tremendous head carriage, great balance, uh, just lo love the fluid motion. Maybe could just speed her up just a little bit if I was to ask her to do one thing. Maybe just when you get pulled into the center of the ring or you're heading to that final lineup, I might just ask you just to uh, shift it into third gear and uh, move it up just a little bit quicker. But uh, certainly I love the uh, unison, the quality, and the balance. And she got her heifer just uh, set up just a little sharper, a little corrector, and just didn't get her quite stretched out as much as the, uh, the young lady in third today, or the show person in third. Third over fourth, uh, 
uh, really liked the way that uh, she tucked the tail down, had her heifer set up a little more correctly, and that overall balance and that tremendous head carriage. Fourth over fifth, I gave her an advantage today. Just uh, just had that tremendous, a uh, um, little more uh, you know, c connection with the judge and the heifer just went back and forth just a little more, a little more alertness, a little more attentive uh, than the uh, show person in, in fifth. But uh, wow, what a great group coming down the home stretch. Sorry for pushing on the clock here a little bit, but uh, what a great group. Thank you. So that's all the classes uh, classes judged, and now it's the uh, the pinnacle of the uh, of this year's showmanship, the showmanship championship coming in. So it'll be first and second in the uh, in the four classes, and from those first and second, Roger and Willow select a champion, a reserve, and honourable mention. This will be a great championship. Like last year was a, a really good championship, but yeah. probably not quite the entries forward. But you know, the quality this year and the entries forward are just outstanding. Yeah. So we can just have a run through the um, the winner for the mature showmanship and, and the second place in that class. Pete Cotton won it. Emily Davis was second. Then in the senior showman, you know, we had uh, Ellis Coldwell and Peyton Robertson, uh, first and second. In the intermediate showman, it was um, Alexandra Beatty and Tori Wilson, first and second. And then in the class that's just left the ring, the junior showmanship, Ruth Allison and Georgia Hines were first and second in that. So um, those eight exhibitors are, I think they're all in. Maybe waiting for one more. Waiting for one just to come in. Yep. Tori Wilson's in, so it's just Alexandra Beatty to arrive. Here she comes. Are we doing for time? Are we? Are we on? Uh, uh, no. We, we are a... about forty minutes late already. Okay, but but the class. I had an class... idea this might happen because we split. Uh, we split yeah, one of the classes. The size of the class is what do you expect. You know, yeah, you, yeah. you can't rush through these youngsters. It's, it's, you know... And he has. And, and to be fair to Roger, he has been pretty sharpish going through yeah. them. But if you get classes of thirty, yeah, um, it yeah, doesn't happen in ten minutes, does it? No. No. So have you got any uh, little wager bets? You know, we're, we're into the same week as Cheltenham. Uh, are you having <laughs> any? Uh, is there anything that's really caught your eye today, Graham, in the handlers? Uh, the top, the top two or three in every every class have been have been real good. Yeah. Um, I liked. Uh, I really liked uh, Ellis Colwell. Yeah. Thought she was real class on the altar. I think the second two are Peyton Robertson. Those two are, have done two tremendous jobs on yeah, those yeah. two heifers. Yeah. 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 Uh, I also like the um, Ruth Allison. Yeah. Who won the junior yeah, yeah, no. junior, junior class. She's she done a super job nice showing that calf. Really yeah, has yeah. done a super job showing that calf. But this is, um, for all those that have competed at uh, in the handlers, this is a separate class. Start again. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure how Roger will do it, whether he'll pick a pick a few out or just line them up and go for his champion that way, I'm not sure. The judges for our heifer show are up in the gantry now, all suited and booted. I'm not gonna argue with them, they're two big lads. I know, yeah, you wouldn't want to meet them and uh on a dark night when you've uh, Put it this way. annoyed them. If we're, if we're doing rugby in the in the ring tonight, I'm on their team. <laughs> <laughs> no, they've uh, their reputation precedes them. 
Mark Nutsford was out judging in New Zealand and came back absolutely raving about the job that they did. So um, speaking to Brent Crothers as well, he knows them well and yeah, gave a really glowing reference on uh, on their capabilities as judges. So it'd be great to see them in the ring a little later. Yeah. Alongside John Cowser. Yeah, I haven't seen Johnny Cowser yet. Oh, Johnny Cowser's just down and underneath us. Okay, yeah. He doesn't look quite as trim as those two. He's just putting his suit on. <laughs> he saw these guys in their posh suits yeah, and was like, yeah. oh my God, where's next? Yeah, it's great to see uh, all the mums and dads by the side of the ring of these potential contenders. Obviously, we talked a little bit about Alison Beatty, but we've got Stuart Caldwell leaning against uh, Ayrshire Banner. Watching, uh, watching Alice do a great job of, uh, of leading her animal. Pete's relative, Doc Cotton, is here as well somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if uh, if they ever have children in, in, in Minnesi, whether it'll be, it'll be called uh, Dot. Dot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you're down the lines listening, Lizzie, make sure you uh, take yeah. that into consideration. Yeah. Or Fred. Fred Cotton. Fred. <laughs> Cotton Fred. <laughs> I don't think you better walk down the lines for the, for the next <laughs> show, a few minutes. Uh, so these young showmen now pulling into the middle of the ring. I think they're going to pull them on. So we have uh, the winners of our first and second places of our senior uh, mature showman Peter Cotton and Emily Davis on the white spotty calf and the jersey respectively looks like they're going to be pulled into some sort of herringbone Ellis formation Ellis is not listening Ellis coming into herringbone formation now never seen this before no herringbone formation herringbone formation Ellis Coldwell the winner of our senior showman Peyton Robinson on the Robertson on the red and white Holstein coming into second uh, in that class and doing a great job of showing that red heifer. And then we've got Alexandra Beatty just coming up the just coming up off screen now, We're coming onto screen any moment. Just there in the top right hand corner. Again, pulling in. Ring steward just positioning the calves again. Herringbone formation. What a view on the screen now, you can see. Look at the perfection. These youngsters have put a lot of time and effort in at home. They've picked some really nice heifers to bring out to. These kids at the top of the class, will have put some work in at home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a lot, hours a lot, and hours and hours of work. A lot of them would have clipped and prepared their animals themselves yeah. as well. Yeah. And then finally, uh, the winner in second place in our junior showman, Ruth Allison and Georgie Hines. So just Roger Turner, our judge, just walking down the, the back side of these calves now. Coming up on the top side, bottom of your screen. Walking over to ring steward Ross Murray, just have a quick chin wag of how he wants the next few moments to go. It's a lot of time and effort, and this is what these young competitors have been working for. Like Graham said, they put a lot of effort in at home, and that effort would have been probably started probably before Christmas in some of these calves' yeah. case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ready? 
Roger. the final. Right. I think we're going to get some words from Roger. Well, ladies and gentlemen, certainly uh, it's been just a just a privilege and an honor for uh, Will and I here the last couple hours. And uh, we're gonna, before I excuse a few heifers and keep a few for this uh, this final presentation. Uh, before I excuse any heifers, I'm just going to ask you all to put your hands together for what has been just an incredible, incredible group of group of young people. I know sometimes we shake our head and kind of wonder where the industry's going and, uh, and kind of wonder where things are at, but I tell you what, when you got this kind of enthusiasm and this kind of passion and uh, this is the next generation, I'd say congratulations, Mom and Dad, you set them up real well. So I'm going to excuse a few heifers and then uh, we'll come down to the final presentation. So Roger and I'll make... Um a short list of, I'm not sure how many, maybe four, three, four, five, perhaps, I'm not sure. An almost all female washout yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, somebody yeah. said that uh, Pete's a bit of an old woman, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's Dart. Oh, no, sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Hi, right, Pete's mum, Dot. Yeah, <laughs> Pete's mum. <laughs> oh, hang on a minute. <laughs> yeah. So it looks like we're going to have uh, four finalists. Four finalists. All coming from the two first classes. So Peter Cotton, winner of the Mature Showman, on the spotty car, followed by the jersey. Led perfect, perfectionly, perfectively. Led Perfectly. to perfection. Perfectly. Perfectly. Good job one of us went to school. I went to school that day on, on uh, elocution. Uh, led, by, led perfectly by uh, Emily Davis from, uh, from Devon. Alice Caldwell on the, the even more spotty calf. And finishing up Peyton Roberts, Robertson on the red and white. So when these animals get lined up, I'm sure we'll hear a few more words from Roger. Well, the home stretch here is uh, the final game is a pretty close game, and uh, well, in our opinion, uh, we've had a great, uh, great opportunity the last couple hours. As as we said, just that uh, passion, that enthusiasm uh, for the industry and uh, and the breed, and uh, to, to uh, take the time and the effort to come out here. Uh, Glenn called me and said, hey, I got a little showmanship contest I need you to judge if you're over for the expo. He didn't tell me it was going to be quite this level. But anyway, uh, you turned the heat up really well, kids, and did a great job. So with that, Will's going to go congratulate uh, the champion, the reserve, and the honorable mention in that order, and uh, I'm going to give some reasons. So we'll get some uh, clapping going here in the ring. If you're at home, clap along. Will's going to go out and... Uh, Make someone's day. He's coming back. Nope. It's going Pete. And our champion showman, Peter Cotton. Reserve champion, Emily Davis. And honourable mention is Alice Coldwell. There's some reasons. I like your selections, Will. Good job. Hey, uh, it's been great to work with Will. I thank you very much for your time and uh, great opinion and uh, really lots of value. So I really appreciate it when you got this many uh, high quality. It's, it, it really does help to, to, uh, to have somebody out here uh, following your footsteps and giving you another set of eyes. So congratulations to them all. I think this, uh, our senior, our champion show person today, right from the time he entered the ring in his class to the time he finished up now, it's just that, that beautiful balance, that beautiful symmetry, that uh, it's kind of fluid motion, if you will. I uh, just got him set up so sharp, so quickly, all the time. And I think uh, our, we feel that the reserve really followed that same pattern, just that, that beautiful quality, that unison, that great head carriage, each and every step they made, they knew where, 
everybody was around the ring. I think it's just that uh, the sharpness, that awareness, a little sharper head carriage on the top couple today. But, uh, hey, the honorable mention uh, had a great run pushing on you hard. And uh, it's been a great way to start out UK Dairy Expo. And uh, the, uh, the rest of today and tomorrow are going to be uh, at, a, at an all-time high, all -time high. So congratulations. Thanks for the opportunity.
Okay. So on. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the first class of regions today. There's only two in it, but two good, very similar calves. I went with the first one. She just tracks that much better in her hind legs, and she's far more squarer out through her hind quarters than the calf I have in second. Thank you. Any good, Rog? Yeah, perfect, Graham. <laughs> this is great. Great, high quality up here at this okay, uh, so media now, studio. Now we're on the screen. So, um, yeah, handling class have finished. Uh, Roger did a great job uh, with Will, which which was a new idea this time to bring a young guy in and have and have you sort of nurture him a little bit. So, yeah, what were your thoughts, Rog? Well, it certainly was a great, high quality show. You know, to, as I spoke in the ring, uh, Graham. You know, when you have that many youth, that many kids that want to be involved in yeah, the yeah. industry, I think it, it, it excites us. It's, it's, ple it's pleasing for us guys up here. Absolutely, Class, classes of thirty handlers. You know that they want to be involved in the industry. Yeah, yeah. Whether they're going to be milking cows or doing something else, they're, they're here today, and I think that really shows that uh, they've had great leadership and setting it up for a great future. I was excited when I see. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. That's and that's probably been our strongest handling class at this show, but that's good to see. Absolutely. It, it, I think I said earlier, if it, it went back a couple of years, people were, oh, showing's dead, nobody wants to show, and, and, and you, you didn't like hearing that. Correct. But there's nobody saying that today. Yeah, no. You know, there's best part of 500 cattle in there and, and, and 30 handlers in a class and, and young kids and kids four-year-old pulling calves around. So just, a, just a great thing to see. Tremendous. I said to the one, uh, the one uh, father or father figure out there, I said, you know, I think this calf's still on the bottle. And he said, oh, the calf's only three weeks old, but the kid wanted to show. So what do I do? And I said, <laughs> yeah, you bring yeah. the calf and you bring the kid to the show. Yeah, yeah. It, it could, and I, I think you're right, Graham. If I step back to your first comment, you know, things have changed the way we look at shows. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's social media and lots of different avenues to see them. But I, I agree. I don't think the shows could ever be more enthusiastic than they are today. No. The trade at the level that they are today. People yeah, yeah. wanting to be competitive, wanting to be in the show ring. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, elevate their genetics. It's, it's exciting at this time. Yeah, it is, yeah. And that's probably that's probably borne out a little bit. There's been an internet sale go on, just a 40-head okay. sale, finished at lunchtime every minute thereafter. Uh, and the initial glim was just up earlier on. Looks like trade's been pretty fast in that sale. We had a calf in it, sold pretty well. Awesome. You know, and, 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 and when margins are pretty tight, if, if at all at the right. moment, yes, yes, people are still 
they'll still go out and buy a good one. We're seeing the same thing at home, uh, Graham. You know, margins are tight. Milk price is not, not yeah, elevated yeah. to a level that we'd really like to be excited about, but uh, the genetic trade is still there. Uh, yeah, yeah. The top end, the people are, want to be competitive. They're trying to improve their herds, and I think that's where they're seeing the value today is in that genetic improvement. To, to That's where they're going to make their income. Yeah, see yeah. That going in the and whether future. it's semen or embryos or whatever they do, they're looking for genetic advancement. Totally. They because are. it can be tested for now. <laughs> exactly. It can be tested for. We're at a whole different So it can be measured. Yes. Absolutely it is. Yeah, yeah. Tremendous. So if you just want to say a little bit about your position in the industry now, Rog, and just where you've come from. I know we were talking just off camera before we came on about yeah, you, when we first met. Absolutely. We narrowed it down to 97, was it? Yeah, 1997, <laughs> back in my home stomping Kem grounds. Kempville Shaw. I was, uh, <laughs> and I think that brings me to a place where the Kempville was kind of a very center, uh, close, yeah, yeah. close to my home family farm. Yeah, yeah. I was born and raised on a family farm in eastern Ontario, but I was really... Um, fortunate to be surrounded by great uh, breeders. Yeah, yeah, That's really what it instilled in me. And if I could tell you, Graham, within an hour of my farm was Don and Dale. Don and Dale's Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We'll go an hour the other way was Braydale Goldwyn. <laughs> right. We'll go down the road a few minutes from him was Gillette and Winbrook and yeah, all yeah, those yeah. great sires yeah, yeah. that they had. Go the other way, I was only a couple hours from Roy Brook and Hanover Hill. Yeah, yeah. I really, and I and I was on all those farms. In the absolute point. heart of it all. Oh man, it, it, I couldn't have, I, I really feel blessed that I was in a time, in an era, where all those guys were at their peak and at their element. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, fantastic. Uh, driving up that Hanover Hill driveway was is beyond, <laughs> still gives me quivers, you know, it's yeah, exciting. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. I feel really blessed that we met in 97, but that was the heart of it. I, I, that was a, I couldn't have been better in a better place. I had a great family farm that uh, gave me, instilled the breed into me and his passion. As a little kid, we had a great herd. We elevated to a, a, a full purebred herd. When we sold the cows in 97, we had the second highest dispersal average that okay, year in right. Canada. Yeah, yeah. So it's been a great ride. Now, as I, now as I sit as manager at Jetstream Genetics, yeah, yeah. went through uh, lots of positions. You've seen a whole heap of changes in your oh, time from leaving God. Kentville to running Jetstream. Totally is. It's, <laughs> and it's been, you know, just the people I've met along the way that have really been the, the influence. A uh, really know, nice way to way start through. judging here this afternoon. And this, if this is the quality we're in for for the next 24 hours, we're off to a really good start. But for me, there was three heifers that made their way comfortably to the top of the line today. But the first two really matched each other. But just when we got them out on the walk, I just gave the heifer in first a clear advantage. She's just a really long heifer and it's that length of neck. She's a little more feminine. She's a little bit cleaner behind her crops, especially when you stand them up over another balanced heifer here in second. Second over third, just a distinct advantage, just in the depth of rear rib. She's a little bit more open of her fore rib and just a little bit more width all the way throughout our, over our balanced heifer here in third. Third over fourth, a bit of a different placing for me. Two very different heifers, but you just gave the heifer in third a clear advantage, just in the strength behind her shoulders over a big... Uh, heifer here in fourth that carries a lot of ground and fourth over fifth you just give her a clear advantage she's just a lot cleaner down through the thigh a lot cleaner down through the neck over our powerful heifer in fifth but congratulations on a nice class okay i think we're back on now Rich. awesome yeah super here we are uh, so uh, yeah a lot of changes and um yeah, now you're uh, you're uh, living maybe just outside Madison. I'm uh, just outside of Madison, which again I think I landed in the in the hotbed, yeah, if you yeah, will. Yeah. You know, World Dairy Expo is right there. Yeah, yeah. Brings a lot of the industry together every year in the first week of October. Um, but the changes, and not only in my life and through the things, the industry's really changed. The, yeah, yeah. The, the cow has changed. What we yeah, how, yeah. how we yeah. can manage the cow, the genetics, the information, the data that we can collect on cows today. The herd size has changed. And, yeah. And all those things have, have been a step by step process to get us to where we are today. I think we're feeding the world population that's growing. Yeah. You know, when we look at uh, India and Pakistan and different countries that are starting to really get into better nutrition, uh, it really elevates us. It's exciting to see where the industry and the dairy industry is going to go with, with the great quality that we produce. Yeah. When when I, um, when I when it was muted that I'd be interviewing you today, uh, one or two people said, you got to ask him, there's two questions you got to ask him. Best cow he's ever seen. Best cow he's ever led. Well, you know, <laughs> it, it, it's a been a, it's been a it's been a history road for me. I I I had I was so fortunate that to spend a lot of time with uh, at Hanover Hill. Yeah. So I, I took uh, with Hanover Hill and their show string to take Brookview Choney Charity. Oh. Uh, you know who was dated as <laughs> uh, incredible perfection. Uh, <clears throat> on our last road trip, we went to Harrisburg and had champion. We went to uh, Madison and had champion, and then we brought her to the Royal and had champion cow. All wow. three. That was her last year that she showed, and and right, so yeah, yeah. she she is 
still in my mind, you know, a cow that just uh, is one of, my, one, of my, one. one of my favorite yeah, yeah, cows. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had the chance to lead uh, Acme Star Lily when she was supreme at World at World Dairy Expo. Yeah. And yeah. So maybe the best cow I've ever led is just to have <laughs> supreme champion. I've led a lot of great cows. I have a lot of great friends in the industry. But Lily, uh, she's the belt buckle I wear today, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and I yeah. wear it a lot, and uh, <laughs> she comes everywhere with me. So that's my favorite. Great. Listen, we're probably going to wrap things up now. We're pushing on with the Young Stock Show. But thank you very much, Roger. Keep up the great work. Good to see you. forward to seeing you tomorrow as well. Cheers, Roger. Thanks. So a really good uh, interview there with our showmanship judge and uh, good class of Red Holsteins in that just while that interview was going on. And also the first class of British Frisians went under the eye of uh, yep. our judge John Cowser as well. So onto the jerseys now on your screen, you can see our first class of jerseys entering the ring. And in the opposite ring, there's a, there's a class of brown Swiss at the moment. There's two, four, six, eight. There's 12 in that class as well, so there's good classes in these calf classes. So just on the right-hand side of your screen, we've got number 33, Rivermead Victoria Stormy, who was sold in the Rivermead sale last year and picked up by the, the Cochrane family from Scotland. Um, she's a victorious daughter from a 84.2-year-old Bubba. Just there on your screens there now. The young heifer following her is number 34, Graham's Boomerang Bell, descending from, quite honestly, one of the, the finest um, jersey pedigrees in the world, the Duncan Bell cow family. That's a great cow family, isn't it? Uh, yeah, super class. Alan. Yep, super family, Dennis. It's a Caledonian branch of the Duncan Bell cow family. David Gray actually invested in embryos from a cow called Jiprat Bells Brasilia, a direct daughter of Duncan Bell. Um, one of the most complete jerseys that the world has ever seen. Excellent 97, an absolute finesse. Um, next animal is 35, just on your screens there now, Rumid Victorious Who, from the Lick Hill Imperial Whoopi Cow family. Her dam was an excellent 95 Comerica. Just coming, uh, making the turn at the bottom of the ring there as number 36, which was a flare popping candy, but looks like we've swapped over to the brown Swiss. Brown Swisses now, so. Yeah, first class of brown Swisses, the maiden heifer class, quite a big entry in the, uh, in the yep. maiden heifers. Calf there is number 87. Number 87 being Kida Jinxer Jolly from uh, T. Lockhead and Sons. Is that not the calf that was in the Global Connection sale? Uh, down was Kida Viastar Jody. Just coming in front of the ring steward now, led by Johnny Lockhead, number 97, Kida Dreamy Sweet Cheeks. The dreamer daughter of Kida, sweet child of mine. Really capacious young heifer. This young heifer just coming onto the screen, number 86. Kida timeout sundial. She's uh, a timeout daughter of Kida Salmon Sunflower, five generations. And then back to Snickerdoodle. We've got some uh, got some movement there in the Brown Swiss ring. We've got uh, Kida Dreamy Sweet Cheeks pulled into first position. Then uh, Black Rack, Calvin Fantastic being pulled into second. 
And Kida, huge respect. A daughter of the great Kida Rhapsody in third. Led by uh, Jessica Miller. Looks like uh, things are progressing nicely in that. Uh, 92 is fourth. Toy Toy, my mum loves Alberto. Yeah, 94. My mum was puffing stuff. Here are uh, Judge, Mr. Ben Govert working very efficiently and very swiftly. Got these heifers all lined up how he likes them. Just a bit of a recap. We had winnow Jake Pauline the third from uh, Ian Blamire and family winning the first British Frisian class of the day. And Liz Mulligan Empress 83 from B Lawson and Sons in second. Uh, great class. I know limited numbers wise with a few of the the regular British region breed is unable to attend, but uh, nice to see that young Jake daughter. Um, she's from a, a, a British region, good plus 83, Elijah, and then uh, an excellent 92 solo granddaughter of the sublime Black Isle Pauline 71 winning that class. Um, so congratulations to the Blamires. Ben Govert here now just putting the final touches on his uh, his lineup in the brown Swiss ring. Just having a quick look at My Mum Loves Alberto from Toy Toy Genetics. But uh, 94, My my Mum's Huff and Puff, getting the nod ahead of uh, My Mum Loves Alberto. These names, there, they're hard to catch up with, aren't they, Alan? You're right there. Fantastic turnout in the uh, maiden heifer brown Swiss ring. That's as big a class as I've seen a brown Swiss here, and it's all credit to the breeders. They've, and they're good heifers as well. There's, there's not a heifer in there you wouldn't be proud to, to put a strap on. Like they're, they're good, solid heifers. Strap on. <laughs> um, moving on to uh, the jersey ring, then, if we can, just have a quick look at some of these heifers. So. Uh, just on the right hand side of your screen there, you've got number 37. Number 37 being Graham Splash Sophie. Her dam was imported from Denmark in 2022. Um, the Grahams, nice to see them here yeah. with uh, with a team of uh, team of jerseys. Mm. Graham's Durries. Yeah. 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 You'll remember their uh, their big sale a few a uh, few years ago uh, now, Graham. Well, it scarred me for life. Um, Having to wear a kilt. I had to wear a kilt, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's your knees like? Oh, I'll find out tonight when I'm rooming with you. <laughs> but it was some sale, small sale, maybe 30 head. Yeah. I think there was 400 people there in dinner jackets. Yeah. Meal served them in the marquee. Were you there, Ivan? I was, yeah. I was yeah. doing all the, all the graphics that yeah, day. Yeah, with a small, a small um, ring at one end. And photographers came flocking forward for snaps of top price calf and yeah. it was it was it was one of them days yeah the animal just left the screen there Blythe bridge choco chip radiance from the jackson for jackson family she'll be a half sister to the first place september and november calf at the all britain calf show and a three-quarter sister to number 31 in this class as well actually yeah our judge mr mr bacon having a a good gander at these heifers. Just at the top right hand corner of your screen, you'll see number 32, Blythe Bridge Choco Chip Paradise. But we've had a, a first pull, and it is number 40, the Choco Chip Radiance heifer I just mentioned, followed by number 36. Flair popping candy from uh, from Gwen Cochran, tracing back to Veronica herself. So, got some really fantastic pedigrees here. We've got uh, obviously 
an animal tracing back to Rapid Bay Rumour, and we've got an animal tracing back to Centurion Veronica. The, 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 um, it wouldn't matter in what country of the world you're at ashore when you start mentioning Veronicas and Rumours yeah. and, yeah. you know, the the. the Iconic cows. Household names almost. Yeah. They are household names anywhere anywhere on the planet. Yeah. yeah so the, the animal in second place actually got a really interesting pedigree. Doesn't actually have Veronica herself in the pedigree. Um, but after seeing Veronica, Mark Chadwick brought embryos in from the dam of Veronica. Wow, right. It traces back to actually a full sister to Veronica. Right. Mm. Um, so she's actually a uh, unique maverick daughter of Flair to Pika Poppy, who has scored 85 points as a two-year-old. In third place, we've got number 35, Rivermead Victorious Who, from the Lick Hill Imperial Whoopie Cow family. Looks like we're getting some confirmations made in the Brown Swiss ring. Um, and it looks like it quite possibly is a first place for the Lockhead family with number 97, Kida Dreamy Sweet Cheeks. He was five generations. Excellent. Grand Dam, obviously excellent. 97, 5E. And then we've got the Black Rack Beast. That's a cool prefix, isn't it? Black Rack. <laughs> Black Rat Calvin Fantastic from Messrs. Williamson's in uh, in second. If you actually lived uh, down near us, actually Black Rat is, is a well-known cider, but you don't want too many drinks. Black Rat. Black Rat. But you that, don't sounds, want... that sounds strong stuff. You don't want too many points of it. That's a great lineup. Ah. Black, Black Rat's a river up here, isn't it? Is it? I think that's where the prefix came from, I uh, think. Right. Nothing seedy. <laughs> <laughs> Great lineup of Brian Swiss, though. Yeah, smashing, smashing. And like I say, the judges worked efficiently and swiftly. And yes, we have got a first place. So congratulations to the Lockhead family. When uh, I, I look back through all the pedigrees of the, of the Brown Swiss over the last few days and doing a bit of uh, background work on them, and when you actually look at Johnny Lockhead, I think we're going to get some reasons, are we? from our Brown Swiss judge, Mr. Ben Govett. Fantastic uh, class of brown Swiss to start with today and you know quite a wide range in uh, ages out here today for me to sort through but I've uh, come up with uh, I think the five animals that we've still got left out in the ring just a fantastic uh, brown Swiss heifers out here for me to post my over today but I think for me um, you know she's the last heifer in the class today the last heifer to come in the ring today and just a heifer that really caught my eye as soon as I seen her you know she's such a stylish feminine uh, heifer but you stand in front of this heifer and she's still got plenty of width throughout she's wide in the muzzle which we love in our breed you know she's wide through the chest but she shows so much dariness angularity and cleanness right throughout and she showed a lot of depth and openness of rib and she walks around on a straight set of feet and legs you stand behind the heifer she's so clean and dairy through that thigh and for me today it is it just the cleanness right throughout and a little more depth and openness through that rear spring at rib at the top and she's just a little cleaner over the thigh over my heifer in second you know, this heifer in second, she's a heifer that caught my eye early on in the class. You know, she's not flashy or showy or as clean as some of the heifers at the top of the line today, but just a heifer that's showing a lot of depth and openness of rib. You know, just a great capacious heifer to me today. And that's just that little more depth and openness of that rear rib. She's a little deeper of her flank today that places over our super silk.
silky, super balanced, super dairy heifer in third. You know, just a heifer you've got to admire. She's so well put together. She's so clean right throughout. She's so clean through the thigh. And you've got to love the way she walks on those rear legs. And it's just to balance a little bit more um, correct through that shoulder set up today. The places over there are beautiful young calf we have in fourth. You know, she was the youngest calf in the class. You know, she's got a lot of growth and size about the calf. You've got to really admire her for a length of neck and openness of body. And it is just that little more clean and she's a little more correct set up in their rump set up today, particularly in her thills today to pace her over his heifer we have coming out in fifth. So just get some results in a second from our Jersey judge, but just to quickly catch up people for the red and whites, we had a first place for Pearsgill, Red Eye, Flagstone, Red, and I'll go through the rest once we hear from our Jersey judge about the first Jersey class of the day. A tremendous class of jerseys to start off here. All different shapes, sizes and kinds, but for me, the longer the class went, I made a couple of changes. The pair of heifers at the top made their way quite comfortably to the top. They're the most balanced pair of heifers. They're long, they're dairy, they're hard topped, and they've both got tremendous rumps. I just gave the heifer in first a distinct advantage over the heifer in second. She's just a lot wider of her chest. You give her a lot, a huge advantage just in the depths of heart room and the fullness through her rear rib today. I love the balance of the heifer here in second, and when I got him into line, I just put, bumped her up one spot. She's just a lot nicer behind her crops, just when she's on the move, she's a little cleaner down through the thigh today. Third over fourth, you just gave her a distinct advantage. She's just a little bit more mature for her, through her growth today. She's a little bit full of her rear rib, there's a little bit more capacity all the way through, and a little bit more width to a hock between her legs over our beautiful, stylish dairy heifer here in fourth. Fourth over fifth, it's just that overall femininity. She's a lot cleaner of her neck and it's the extension of her neck out of her shoulders over our powerful heifer here in fifth. Congratulations. So just to uh, just finish where I was le leaving off there, so Pearsgill Red Eye Flagstone Red did in fact win the uh, Junior calf in the red and white section, so congratulations to Gareth Ogden and his family. Carrick Ranger Abbey from Buckerbank Farm was second. Ling Lane Norway Lulu Lemon Red from the Donalds was third. And in fourth position, Panda Olympic Icon Red. Um, so massive congratulations to all them exhibitors. Um, and uh, we will now move on to the first class of Dairy Shorthorns again under the watchful eye of our judge, Mr. Ben Govett. So it's a good entry in this uh, short one class. A seven forward. Some really nice calves out there. It's a long while since I've seen as many short ones in the ring. Yeah, it's a good maiden effort class, this is. I think we're getting some uh, some of the music through one of the judges' microphones, which may be still switched on. So on your screen now is number 75. That's Sean Lee Jerry, the 31st. She's from that great Sean, uh, Sean Dixon. and uh, The great Sean Dixon. The great Sean Dixon. <laughs> He's got less hair than me. Uh, <laughs> Dixon and Holiday uh, yeah, yeah. Partnership. And Jerry, the Jerry Care, we're five generations of VG and excellent, and uh, just a really good breeding cow family. That is number 75. Yeah, Judge, having a look at it now. Just in the far ring.
So number 79 that's in the shot now is uh, Churchroy Golden Drop 43. She's a Gorbro Storm Hunter. She's two generations of VG. Really well put together heifer there. Entering the screen is number 81. That's the Breckney Goldie, the 48th, from uh, the Harrison family. And she's a Churchroy Pharaoh. She's complete four, or got four generations of VG and excellent 10,000 litre uh, mother. It's a really well put together heifer as well. There's some really outstanding short horns in this class. Beautiful lines to them. Number 74, she, I think she's the youngest calf in the class. She's from the Marleycoat herd. She's Marleycoat Petal 147. She's a Marleycoat Blizzard. Three generations of VG and excellent behind that calf. An unusually marked calf for a, a short one. Yeah, yeah. And it looks Mo a little different. Moving into the screen, that shot now is number 75, I think. Yeah, 75. That's... Uh, Sean Lee Jerry that we mentioned earlier from that great Jerry family of the Dixon and Holiday uh, team. And there is the legend that is Sean Dixon, number 76, leading that. Earthingveld V. Vi, the 21st from uh, Thomas Mosscript and family. Which is a VG86 dam. So meanwhile, in this closer ring, we're in the um, class nine, the maiden heifers for the Ayrshires. I think there's six heifers in this class. Yeah, six in there. And he's probably on the point of making a, an initial pull, I think. So in the shot now is the, uh, is the Rich Haven entry. She's a lucky. Rich Haven, hail lucky. Yeah. And Barney. Hannah's got her game face on. That'll go back to that Lucat Lucky, will it? That uh, Yeah, yeah, Lucat Lucky. Oh, yeah, three, yeah. three generations yeah, yeah. back with Lucat Lucky, the 96-point cow. Great cow that was. Yeah. Lots of strength and power, and you can yeah. see that in that heifer yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Looks like we might be getting our first pull in the Dairy Shorthorn ring, will we? Yeah, it looks like it's gone to number 77. Which is uh, Moss Rig Barrington Iris 20th. It's an Amber, Fire, Amber Firefox. Actually went to that Amber herd a few years ago uh, when judging in Derbyshire. Oh, yeah. Tremendous herd of shorthorns. Good herd. Really outstanding herd of yeah. shorthorns. In second place is... Uh, uh, number 76, Earthing, Earthing Geld Voy 21st from Thomas Mosgrup. In third standing at the moment is number 74, which is Marleycoat Petal 147. In fourth place is number 81 in the, uh, on your screens is Brittany Goldie the 48th by Church Road, Fer Church Road Faro. Got our first uh, first comment written uh, into the Borderway UK Dairy Expo Facebook page. Um, so uh, Amy Harrison is enjoying watching the show live from home. She can't make it this year. Well, the next best thing is to listen to the live stream. Yeah, and she's uh, touting for a bit of business. She's uh, the cattle secretary. She's new in position for uh, Emily show in West Yorkshire. Um, so she's uh, asking if anyone uh, would like to uh, take part in that fantastic show, then to to get in touch with uh, with any member of the show society. Does it say what the dates are? It doesn't, no. So if she's still listening, perhaps you could ba pass it back to tell us what the dates are. We'll give it a mention. Emily show is the 3rd of August, 2024. Oh. 3rd of August, Emily show. You're truly the magician you are. My click of a button. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just know how to use Google. Yeah. <laughs> I judge Day, uh, Daniel Bacon now looking at these fantastic 
Ayrshire Cathal, yeah. the maiden half of class, having a bit of a think. We're getting a final lineup in the short horn ring as well, above us. I don't think much has changed, has it? It's from from the, from the first lineup. So I think I think third and fourth have changed over. Oh, okay, yeah. I think yep. the Brankney half has moved up to third, and and the uh, the really uh, the uh, Marlecote heifers. Uh, so we have a, we have a first pull in this uh, Ayrshire class, and it looks like it's uh, it's Bounty's calf. Yeah, looks like and Hale lucky. Yeah. Uh, Holmes would hail Bella from Moors. Yeah. And second, that'll be um, that'll be Andy Rimmer's breeding. That was bought, I think, at the uh, Black and White Cell. Right. Yeah, it could have been. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. Pretty sure it was bought at the Black and White Cell. They caught Snowdrop. One of Sweets. Okay. So that'll be Sweets, Danette. Yeah. By Beach Mount Magic, Mike. So good yep. job. We've got Mr. Shire with us in the in the building. <laughs> 64 is Mark Coat Ruth. Menzies. Yeah. And then sixth is number 62, Sean Lee Jerry. So it's a Jerry, another Jerry. So there's two Jerrys in the a Jerry in the short horn. So wow. Jerry in the air. It's all traced back to the same cow, but yeah, 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 yeah. I wonder if that, I wonder if that's happened before. I don't know. Almost showing at the same time. One for our yeah. breeds. Yeah. Same family in two different breeds in yeah. in the ring at the same time. I think that could be a first. A could world first. a world first. first. A world first. Oh my god. Have we a world record? <coughs> so we have the uh, <laughs> final placings in the uh, short horn class. And at first it goes to number 77 which is uh, Mossrig Barrington Iris the 20th from the Fisher and Daughters. The second is the uh, Number 76, Earthingeld Voy, the 21st from Thomas Moskrup. In third place is Breckney Goldie, the 48th from uh, Paul Harrison and family, uh, a Church Roy Pharaoh daughter. And in fourth place in that class is Marlico Petal 147 from the uh, Baines family. Looks like um, the Rich Irvin Heifer has got the nod. You know, great class of heifers again to start off our, uh, our short on show today and something probably as the day goes on, everyone's going to get sick of me talking about, but, you know, I really love heifers that show balance. I think heifers that are balanced uh, make cows that are balanced and uh, that's what we've got definitely with this uh, the heifer that comes out in first today, just a super balanced animal. She's the most balanced heifer in the class and something you really got to mind, she's big, she's long, this heifer, and like I said, the balance is what gets her over our uh, second place heifer today. Second place heifer, you really got to love the dairiness and cleanliness and the femininity of the heifer and she's that long, clean neck and uh, clean dairy rib and down clean through that thigh to place over a heifer in third. The heifer in third is another heifer that's super balanced, you know, heifer that's super correct for me today. And she uses that uh, overall, she's a little cleaner over the ribs for me today. And she tracks a little straighter on those rear legs to place over the heifer in fourth today. Fourth and fifth, the close placing for me today, I do just give the advantage to this younger heifer today. She's probably a little more well grown for her age. She's a little longer through the body over the heifer that placed in fifth today. Not to take down the way from this heifer in fifth, you've got to love the depth and openness of rib on her. So the Ayrshire's just pulling in now. Think about the think about the great supporters of the show all the years gone by. And um, Rich Irvin have been great supporters uh, of this show, pre predominantly with the Holstein breed, but um, with the Ayrshire's as well. So nice to see them at the top of this uh, of this class early on in the show. That's a good five and a half hours, six hours journey for them to get. Yeah, and, and, and they fetch big numbers, and, and, yeah. and it'll, there'll be... A, a, a decent amount of cost associated with getting to yeah. the show, but he loves showing. Yeah, he's a great supporter of the show. Well, that's the only air show they've got here. So, come with one air show and win a class. Is good. To, yeah, it's good for anyone. One out of one. Take yeah. that. Yeah. But if anybody can make Hannah smile when she's uh, she's handling, it'll really be something. <laughs> 
I thought she had wind. No, no, no she's she, she uh, <laughs> she's like her father. When he puts his game face on, he very rarely smiles when he's in a ring. I've seen it. I've seen it. Yeah. Actually, he very rarely smiles any time. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's smiling now. Uh, Rich is a good mate. He's a good lad. Yeah. And while we uh, see the Ayrshire judge uh, just receiving uh, or handing out the rosette, should I say? Our judge Johnny Cowser will be uh, looking at the uh, the next class of British Frisians. So we've got uh, three entries in that class. But we'll just have some reasons for the Ayrshire Maiden Heifer class before we go through the British Frisians. A really nice class to start off the Ayrshire show. There's a few different ways we could have done this class, but for me, the longer the class went, I just went with the most balanced heifer in the class. She may not be the longest and biggest heifer, but she's got the least holes in her. She's hard on top, she's long, and you, you, you've got to admire the angularity to this heifer. You give her a distinct advantage over our beautifully balanced heifer here in second, just on the way she tracks on her rear legs, especially on her hind left leg over our square heifer here in second. You also give her a distinct advantage just in the cleanliness of her neck and down through her shoulder. Taking nothing away from the heifer here in second, you, you gotta love the overall balance, the depth and the width throughout the heifer, and you give her a clear advantage over the third place heifer. She's just a lot cleaner down through the thigh. She's a little nicer in her thorough setting than our heifer here in third. Third over fourth, it's just the overall maturity of the heifer. She's a little wide of her pin. She's a little full of her rear rib here today over our younger heifer in the class here in fourth. Fourth over the fifth, it's just that overall maturity. She's a little wider of her chest over our lean heifer here in fifth. You've got to love the balance of the heifer here in fifth, and you just give her a clear advantage just in the femininity over our powerful heifer here in sixth. Congratulations. So into our uh, British Frisian class now then. So uh, like I said, three entries in this class. The, uh, the animal just coming onto the bottom right hand side of your screen now is uh, number 104. That is Liz Mulligan Pauline the 21st. Again, tracing back to the Black Isle Pauline cow family. Black Isle Pauline 71 being that Sensational brood cow that she is, mother of so many bulls in AI. She's actually a Kirkby Jupiter daughter. He was a red carrying British Frisian actually, so. And coming into second place, number 103, Adams Cherry the 38th. Got Adams on the top side and Adams on the bottom side by the homebred Adams citizen from the Adams Cherry 34 cow. Dan was actually British Frisian good 78 and that looks an absolutely sensational improvement oh, yeah. on the dam. Yeah. Again, the cow family originating on the Black Isle, but uh, and then 817 in, 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 in third position as well, so. Eight one seven being a late entry. Krugside Jingle Iona 8 from Al Messrs. Rees from South Wales, late me Jingle daughter. But uh, let's go ahead and uh, hear John Cowser's thoughts on these three British Frisians after he's had his photograph. Uh, 
I'll just walk out that way. And this class of Yearling Heifers, I went with this first heifer because she was stronger through her loin. She tracks better on her hind legs. She uh, flexes her hind legs better than the heifer having second. And just that bit more strength than the heifer in second. Heifer in second over number three. She's just stronger through her loin. Shows her so far better uh, than this heifer I have in third. Thank you very much. Some really comprehensive reasons there from our judge, Mr. Johnny Cowser. Just see um, in the lower ring, the uh, the second red and white class. Yeah. Looks like there's uh, one, two, three, four, five calves in. Uh, first calf in looks a real nice calf. Jackpot Willow Jody Red uh, from Jack Watts. She actually sells later this year in the first look at first look. So right, she's so in the sale. She is indeed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll have more about that uh, tomorrow when we interview some of the guys involved in that uh, in that sale. The second calf in uh, this class is um, Panda Cheesecake Red from Panda. Love a bit of cheesecake, mate. Always, uh, always good with the red and whites. Third one is New Meadow Cutilicious from um, New Meadow Holsteins. That's closely followed by. Um, Panda O Crumble Red. And then what's the final one? Can't just see the number on the final one in. Number 10, Graham. Um, so we ain't got a, she could be the Newton Moss. Miranda. Diamond back. Pauline Red? No. Um, is, she in, is she a late entry? Not on my copy. Red and white. Number 10 not showing there. Mm. So number 10 was showing here, Newton Moss, Diamondback, Pauline Red, the third. From Meshes Fisher. That was in the handlers, that young lady finished fourth in the handlers with that calf. For uh, four exceptional, five exceptional pedigrees here in front of us. You say it was number 10? Yeah. Yeah, so it's Newton Moss, Diamondback, Pauline Red. Yeah. Well established family there from the, the fishers at Newton Ross. Yeah, yeah. 87 point Attico Dam. Again, good supporters of the show. Number 11's on the screen. Yeah, right so now. number 11 being uh, Newton Moss, yeah, New Meadow Cutilicious. Yeah. That goes back to the Cutes family that's Steeples. Been developed yeah. by Roger and Diane Steeples, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <clears throat> uh, numerous generations of VG and Excellent back to Sharkham, actually. Back to a British right. Friesian wow. cow family. Yeah, the Grand Dam was uh, Kramar Black Diamond that uh, was acquired by the Innesses. I remember them buying that, the black and white, I think, as an in-car I That's remember correct. right. Yeah, yeah. Real fancy in-car at the time. And then she got nominated All Britain Senior 2 in 2021. Yep. Yeah. Only uh, one in the class, but definitely a deserving... <laughs> Winner today, you know, she's an in-calf brown Swiss heifer, uh, showing a lot of breed character. You stand in front of the heifer, you got to admire that width and strength through the front end. You know, she's wide and open of the muzzle, and, uh, you know, she walks on a great set of feet and legs. Definitely a deserving winner. Just a shame there's uh, no one out there to compete with. So congratulations to Zoe Cam Cambridge uh, with Bingham Martini Apple the third. Taking their first place in there. So that's, come, all the, that's come up all the way from Bristol. Yeah, yeah. Barry Cambridge and that sort of. Barry and Zoe, big support. Oh, yeah, that's a guy that he's had a few jerseys. He bought a yeah, jersey yeah, off yeah. me, I think that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he cleared me out on the jerseys yeah, as well. Yeah. Took my Bar whole, Barry, whole team. Uh, big supporter of all the West Country shows, uh, Barry and Zoe. Um, yeah, got a number of nominations this year in the Jersey All Britons as well. That's right. good, isn't it? I think they got two or three nominations in the All Britons. Nice calf just below us now on the screen, the um, Panda or Crumble Red. Nice calf. Yeah, number 12 being led by uh, Becky Hines. Number seven just coming on the screen, that was the Jackpot Willows Jody calf. Traces back to obviously the Bryden and Fred and Jodies, led by Laura Helen. Great, great days visiting Fred and all those years back. Used to love going there when they had the when the Jodies were in full flight and and now they're just everywhere, aren't they? Yeah, Every, yeah. Everyone's propagated the, yeah. their own different lines and Jack and his family have uh, 
developed that that line now grazing the banks of Bedwas Hill in South Wales, <laughs> the second most famous hill after Snowdon. Have you actually been there? Yeah. It's not an easy farm. You go it? up and up and up it, and up and up. It's not an easy farm. I actually went there last summer when it was a real drought on and, and uh, yeah. The maize looked really well, but the grass wasn't looking so good. We're just getting a bit of stick off these two guys down here now. Andrew Swells, who alleges to be a classifier, I'm not sure. A couple of pensioners. You no, know, yeah. he's a legend. And uh, and Willie and Willie Watson. Yeah. <laughs> it's about time Willie Watson got on a stepladder and grew a bit. Yeah. Willie, stand up. Oh, you are. <laughs> you are stood up. <laughs> <laughs> We thought he was kneeling down. <laughs> <laughs> number uh, number nine there, just uh, going off to the right-hand side of your screen. That was the Panda Cheesecake. A Willow's daughter from a 87-point second carved amaretto. Yeah, nice calf as well. There's five nice calves in there. You're not sure which way he's going to go. Cause her, uh, her awesome sister, Panda Cheeky, actually sold in the Global Connection sale last oh, right. year. So. Right. Number 11 there, the bottom of the screen, that's the Q Delicious. But we've got uh, a couple of placings made in the Dairy Shorthorn ring now. and That was a quick class, Jim. Yeah, very quick. That caught us out, that one. Yeah. So first place for number 83. Yeah. Uh, number 83 being uh, Sean Lee Jerry, the 28th. She's a Cotton Hall Galaxy daughter of Sean Hill Jerry, number 9. Mm. And then uh, in second place, Krugside Jazz, Duchess the fourth from uh, Messrs. Reese again from uh, from South Wales. So uh, our judge, Mr. Govert, just getting a couple of quick snaps for his uh, for his little holiday album. So Panda first and second, isn't it? Yeah, first pull for red and whites, and uh, they're dominating this class. Panda first and second in the red and whites. We're going to well, just a reasons. small class for our. Uh, in calf efforts today, and uh, you know, two two animals are probably fairly different stages of uh, of their development. But uh, for me today, I give the advantage to this uh, older heifer. You know, she's not too far off uh, getting into her work, and heifer looks like she's going to add up pretty nicely. But you know, she's a super balanced heifer. She's big, she's long, she's open. You know, she's got a lot of width through that front end. Not to take any of the way from my heifer in second today. You know, this is a heifer that's balanced too. You know, a heifer that's clean and angular through that shoulder, and she's got a lot of depth and openness of flank. Just not quite the maturity and development over this big, powerful heifer in first today. So we've got to pull off in the Red Holstein class, and uh, it's number nine. Is it's in first? A few, a few different sizes in this red and white class, but pretty nice calves yeah. right through. The good calves all the way through. So number nine is Panda Cheesecake Red. She's a Blondin's Willow Red. Second in the class is uh, number 12, Panda Oak Crumble Red. She's a, an actor red. Obviously going back to the great Oakley Bracow family. Yeah. Yeah. In third place is Jackpot Willows Jody Red 5. She's a blonde in Willows Red as well. In fourth place is number 11, New Meadows Cutelicious. She's a, a Panda or Orangutan. Nearly too much for me to say there. And in and in fifth place is Newton Moss Diamondback Pauline Red. Three. The third. Third. Yeah, absolutely sensational cow fam. Uh, cow class of young heifers there. And uh, massive congratulations to uh, Molly Westwood. Obviously a, a regular... Yeah. yeah. She loves it, does Molly. That's not a five-minute trip coming from Molly's place to Carlisle. No. no, I think she got stuck in all that traffic on the M5. No. That I think she was stuck in the traffic for an hour, I think, something like yeah. that. Fair play to her. A wagon fire or something yesterday that uh, David, yeah, yesterday that held a lot of people up, yeah, wasn't yeah. there? Yeah. But, uh, but, yeah. The Trump. good thing is none of none of the exhibitors were in the in the uh, accident or the fire, so that's, uh, yeah. that's a godsend. You might have to wait, but it's better to wait than be in it for a certainty so the top ring is waiting for the next class to come in is that going to be probably going to get some uh, brown twisters in there are we 
Must be getting near championship time. I don't think there's that many. There's we another, have another, finished the brown Swisses actually. Yeah, there's, no air, there's not so another Ayrshire class. Just another class of one more Ayrshire British class. Frisians to come in and a class of Ayrshires to come through. Another couple of classes of red and whites. And there's a split class of Jerseys. No. Any more Jersey classes or they're all through? No, there's uh, another two Jersey classes, I think. Yeah. Uh, five more tremendous heifers in this class, but for me, the longer cl this class went, two, he two heifers handily made their way to the top. Two very similar made heifers, two heifers with plenty of length, two heifers with plenty of dariness all the way through. But the longer the class went, you just got to give the heifer in first a clear advantage. She just moves a lot easier on them rear legs. She's a little bit nicer between the crops and a little harder on top over our long heifer here in second. You also gave her an advantage because it's a little wider of a chest when, they, when you stand them up. Taking nothing away from a heifer in, here in second, you admire the overall capacity of heifer, the depth of rib of this heifer. And it's the overall stretch and length of the heifer that places over our younger heifer here in third. You also give her a distinct advantage just in her thel placing. Third over fourth, I just give her a clear advantage. Just in the setup of a rump, she's a little bit more level of her pins and she's a little harder on top over our beautiful feminine heifer here in fifth. Fifth over sixth, is this the overall maturity over our balanced heifer here in fifth? Congratulations. Yeah, good set of reasons there from our judge, Mr. Bacon. British Frisian class now going under the uh, watchful eye of Mr. John Cowser from, uh, from Scotland. Just two entries forward in this in-calf effort class. Yeah, number 106, Earthingale Mission Mini, a mission from a Balmoral. And then uh, Liz Mulligan, Honey Schnapp, the second. Obviously, uh, the Honey Schnapp family originating at uh, the Culverness herd down south. First generation of this cow family uh, at, uh, at the Lawson family's farm now. But a potential sixth generation British Frisian VG or British Frisian excellent in the making. Yeah, yeah. So it'll be good to see... Uh, which way he goes with these two uh, strong, fine examples of the British Frisian breed. Just asking them a couple of quick questions about their heifers. Next Jersey class is just entering the ring. So in the jersey class, we have uh, jersey ring, sorry. We have the second class, which is uh, the maiden heifer class born in 2023. <laughs> Looks like it's going to be a fairly big class, this one, Alan. I think so, too. So we've got number, uh, number 41 just going across the top of your screen there, leading, uh, leading the way. And that is Longing Colombo Islanders Daydream out of an 86.2 year old Bontino. And a fan behind that, a family developed on the island following in uh, second into the ring. We have number 42, Rivermead Addiction Catherine. Quite aptly purchased by Catherine, uh, Catherine Jenkinson, but I think we might be just be getting to the position for some reasons from John Cowser, or maybe get some pictures actually first. So the winner of the class in the British Frisians is 107. Yeah. 107 being the uh, being Liz the Lawson families. Yeah. 
Liz Mulligan honey snap the second, and then uh, second mission mini from uh, from the the moss crops. And we're going to get some reasons from our judge, Mr. John Cowser. In this class, uh, Frisian heifers in calf. The first heifer, she's that little bit longer, deeper through the rib, stronger through the loin, and tracking far better in the legs, and showing her much more style. And this heifer in second, not taking any away for it, she's a, a decent heifer as well. Thank you. Yeah, another few words thank there you, from, John. from John. Yeah, thank you. Back, so back to the jersey uh, yeah. jersey ring, where we've got uh, a really strong entry of uh, 10 animals in this class. So just uh, about to make the turn in the bottom left-hand side, there was uh, number 42, as I was, as I was saying. So uh, the dam was a VG88 Carbala lad. It's uh, an alter bull, is it not? Yeah. Alan? Yeah. And then, uh, yeah. 43 is the Burry Hill uh, from the Zoe Cambridge again. So Zoe not only in the Swiss has brought jerseys as well. Got a little bit of a soft spot for that animal. The the sire of that actually uh, was uh, from a cow that I bred. Oh, good. Uh, that uh, Zoe and, uh, and Barry picked up from me. The dam of that um, being uh, an excellent 90 point that traces back to rumour. So it's got... Juno Limerick yep. on the top side and Rumour on the bottom side, so it's a full uh, full Rapid Bay pedigree, that. And uh, seeing Catherine, uh, Catherine leading Catherine. Catherine Jenkinson. It's a nice effort, that, to be yeah, fair. That's a nice good point. angle, that, yeah. whoever's uh, getting that angle. So just at the bottom of this dairy expo from that uh, fantastic, excellent 95 point Joel daughter. The judge just having a good look at her. So the calf in the shot, the dark calf in the bottom left hand corner is Upton Chop Spice from, uh, the, from Miss Kay Watson. It's an Avonlea Chocker Chip. And then a VG87. Behind that, and then that goes back to a Jaeger bomb bred by Alison Harvey and Sam and Tracy Wake. Back to the Duncan Bell cow family again, a cow family we've mentioned a few times already today. She's the animal that the judge is just having a good look at here now. Really nice dark calf, that isn't it? It's a nice calf. Nice sweep to her rib. Good feet and legs. We'll just have a quick uh, quick talk about these next couple of heifers. So number 46 is uh, Silver Sparkle Ferdinand Aria. Number 47, Kerbanks Explore Queen. But we should probably turn our attention to the, the other ring, should we, uh, should we, Alan? There's two, uh, two brown Swiss in. Br brown Swiss Championship now, this is. Um, so... Uh, Zoe's in this class, so she's not going to get her in calf effort in there. Welcome back to the ring, Kida. Dreamy Sweet Cheeks. And Black Rat Calvin Fantastic. And this is a really poor timing for Catherine. Uh, for Zoe Cambridge. I hope someone's helping her. Because we would like to welcome back Brigham Martini Apple the third as well. Johnny Lockhead just bringing uh, Sweet Cheeks into position. I think uh, I think the Swiss are going to wait. 
Is that what's happening? Is that well? There's no there's no championship been judged on them, and I think they're just leaving the ring because the third animal. Yeah. Zoe Cambridge is in here showing her jerseys, and it's just a little bit. That's good that they've. Uh, yeah. They've held fire. Yeah, yeah. So let's turn our attention back then to the jersey, the jersey ring. We can see number two one three in the bottom uh, bottom left hand side of the the ring now. So actually we'll, we'll start in the very very left hand corner, number forty nine. So number 49, Blythe Bridge, Choco Chip, Riley, direct um, from uh, from Grandest Rumour, yeah. making her assistant to the other Blythe Bridge calves that we yeah. saw this morning. But this, this one owned by Gwen Cochran. And this actually... Uh, did this get bought in the black and white? Sir? It did, yeah. We uh, Well, this 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 won the December, February calf class at the All Britain Calf Show and was reserved jersey champion. Yeah. I think you might find that the uh, granddam of this... Actually, no, the dam of this, I actually made champion at the All Britain, All Breeds Jersey Calf Show. Grandest room, eh? Yeah. That's cool. It was many years ago. She's a lovely half of that. And then, uh, she is a nice heifer. 213, a, an animal that's uh, not in your catalogues. A late entry. And we've not even got it in ours. I know who this is. This is uh, an animal that was mistakenly entered in the Holstein section. So this is uh, Dan Mostragi, Atlantic Way VIP Frisky from Sheila Yates. She's a VIP daughter from Lookout of Fireball. That's why we don't have her in our catalogues. So the brown Swiss are back. We'll uh, just see if we can get some movement in the uh, jersey ring before we turn our attention to that brown Swiss championship. And then we've got uh, Dan Mostry, Atlantic Way VIP Frisky being pulled out into uh, into first position. Followed by uh, Addiction Candy, the sister to T-Bone Minx, in second. And then the uh, Blythe Bridge Choco Chip Riley in third. It's a nice view, seeing these, the strength of these three heifers in... Uh, That's a good heifer in first place, one. In, the, in, the, in, in this class of jersey heifers. Very complete, that heifer, isn't it, in first yeah. position? Yeah. Walks uphill. Good strength in the front chest as well. Ugly leader on the front, making her look more beautiful as well. <laughs> Better not say what we think his name is. I got a right telling off from a certain young lady who was his wife last year for calling him something. I'm not that. He's got his game face on again. So I think... Um, Whilst our judge just makes his mind up on this jersey class, I think we will now turn our attention to the first championship of the day, which is the Brown Swisses. Yeah. And just to recap, that was Kida Dreamy Sweet Cheeks. Black Rack Calvin Fantastic was second to her. And our third contender for the Brown Swiss Championship is... Uh, Hiding in the corner. Playing hide and seek, and uh, that's Bingham Martini Apple the third. Um, she doesn't want to play. A couple of nice heifers there, though, lined up in uh, in the Brown Swiss Championship so far. So you're getting good good views of that on the side view on uh, on the live stream there on the screen. Graham uh, Graham's just joining us now again as we uh, as we watch for this Brown Swiss Championship. Got a change of change of leadman leadsman on this in Carfefa. Even the big lads kind of got a job to hold that one. Big, strong, powerful thing that in Carfefa, isn't it? Yeah, she is. 
she wants to do something, she's going to do it. She knows she can do it too. So I think we're going to get some reasons now from our judge, Mr. Ben Govert. Well, it's only, uh, it's been a small Brown Swiss show, but the quality's definitely been fantastic. And uh, just like uh, everyone ringside, just to give a round of applause to all the exhibitors and particularly these three animals that I got out here to uh, select my champions from today. So we have, yeah, like I said, the three animals, the first and second in the first class and our uh, winning in class heifer today. Um, you know, what can you say? The first two animals, I spoke a lot in their class, you know, just fantastic brown Swiss animals. You've got to admire the femininity and depth and openness of rib and the feet and legs on the, on these two uh, these two young animals. And then our in-calf heifer that shows a lot of breed character. You know, she's long, she's open. You know, she's got a lot of strength through the front end and, you know, she walks also on another great set of feet and legs. Just another uh, another real hallmark of the brown Swiss breed. But I, uh, I'm not going to waste any more time. I'll go out and... Uh, select my junior champion, my reserve junior champion, then the honourable mention, and just ask that once again you uh, show your appreciation for these animals and give them a round of applause. Another incredible class of Jersey heifers here, but for me there was a pair of heifers that made their way to the top quite comfortably. You've got to admire this heifer at the top, she pulls it all together, she's hard top, she's long, she's lean, and considering how old she is, she's in great dairy form. You give her a clear advantage over our second place heifer, she's just a little longer of a rump, she's a little longer of a neck, and you just prefer how it comes out of a neck over our beautiful dairy heifer here in second. You also give her advantage to this little wider of a pins over our he second heifer here. Second over third, a bit of an easier placing for me today. You just give her a distinct advantage, just a lot leaner through her neck today. She's a lot cleaner down through her thigh over our older heifer here in third. You've got to love the depth and openness of the heifer here in third, and you give her a distinct advantage just in that depth of rear rib. She tracks a little nicer on them rear legs, and she's a little stronger through her loin region today. Fourth over fifth, the heifer in fifth didn't really want to play the game out in the ring here today, so she didn't give me as good a look as I think she could have, but you just gave the heifer in fourth a clear advantage. There's a lot cleaner down through her thigh over our balanced heifer here in fifth. Congratulations. Great set of reasons there, Daniel. Yeah, good, good set of reasons. Nice class of jerseys. Lovely class of jerseys. That first heifer is real, real silk. She is real silk. So going back to the uh, Brown Swiss Championship, it was Kedar Dreamy Sweet Cheeks was champion, Black Rock Kelvin Fantastic was uh, reserve, and uh, an honourable mention was Bingham Martini Apple Three. 
So that was our first championship of the day. And don't forget, there's an interbreed championship later on in the evening. I think, is, is that the interbreed championship that can be judged by the public? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't, is that? RB will know about that. Is the genus Supreme Heifer being judged by the public vote? Yeah, it has been other years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's, is that announced, that's maybe announced on the Saturday. Yeah, 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 yeah. So don't forget to keep your eye on the internet to make your vote. So we've got the next Ayrshire class coming in now. So our resident expert is going to come in take in handy again now. Yeah. <laughs> There's no such thing as a spurt. So... Uh, at the moment, the one in front of you is uh, kind of good. Number, seven, number seventy-one. Got kind of a good view of on the your screen. That's Parkhead Bandit Brenda. She was actually reserve champion here, uh, half a champion last year. And uh, Tom Baines owns this. Young Tom, uh, Richard's son, is a really, really enthusiastic young breeder and uh, does all the breaking of his own calves. And that. this is a calf he he, he uh, bought off a of Kev Tinkler with his own money. Good luck. So uh, yeah, good luck to. Uh, Tom here in this. So on your screen at the moment. Number 67. 67 is uh, Broricide Hale Pansy the seventh from the firm of J.M. Howie. She's a Broricide uh, Hale off of the uh, Broricide Classic Pansy. Dams and a 92 point cow. Sold in the uh, Broricide sale last, uh, last May. In the right of your shot, the brown heifer on the on the far right of your shot is number 68, which is Harperfield. No, sorry, it's Marlicoat Mary Rose, the ninth. She's a, a Troutbeck Progress out of a Chank Mary Rose 115. She's got a, an excellent classified mother, VG grandmother. Following bomb behind that is another Chang Mary Rose, the eighth, from the Baines family again. Uh, another trout break progress, this time out of Mary Rose 113. Um, uh, so uh, the, the Baines family have been very fortunate uh, to... Uh, Robert Stevenson of Chang wanted to uh, sort of like run, his, uh, run the uh, business down a bit, so... Um, Richard Baines has done a, a bit of a deal with him and having some of the Chang cows there and it really has paid off. I was there last summer looking around his herd and some of the Chang uh, influence of the, of the herd now is coming through with tremendous cow, cow families and strength and uh, yeah, I'm sure he's going to gain a lot through this. How many cows Baines he milk now then? About 120, 130 yeah, yeah. on two robots. Um, yeah, it does it really well. Cows re milk really well. They've got a milk round as well. So okay, that's yeah. that parkhead bandit, uh, Brenda, coming through again. What a tremendous, powerful heifer that is. This heifer's due in May. The uh, World Conference shows in July, and Tom's open to get this heifer calved and railed off. And uh, yeah, yeah. Looks like his cousin's got the pull. Looks like number 69's been pulled in, Marley Coat Mary Rose the ninth, followed by number 70, Marley Coat Mary Rose eight, then followed by Brary Side Hale Pansy. Dad's managed to pit the sun. Yeah, Tom's at a disadvantage. I think the heifer's just at the wrong stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the Parkhead Bren Bandit Brenda's coming into fourth place. Be all right, that if I know it's as fit as fire now and, and carrying condition, but I think it'd be all right. That I think there's a lot of nice things about a heifer, yeah. She's a good clean bone on her, she's, she can walk well, yeah, yeah. So we see the line up there.
Tom, hey, <laughs> I, I think you preempted it. Yeah, yeah. So, son's, just been, son's just been gone past the old man now. <laughs> I like that one, Tom. That was a bit of ingenuity there. So uh, there was, a, the, I don't know whether you heard about this saying about Bainesy and the, and the Great Yorkshire Show. He used to measure the kids by how many stacks of uh, oh, yeah. of, uh, of blue tinnies he could get. Uh, get. <laughs> so uh, yeah, young young Tom, young Tom, he's shot up so he can take more blue tinnies to the Yorkshire. <laughs> He'll be taking his own now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fosters. I don't, I don't think, yeah, I don't think he's quite there yet. There are other, uh, there are others. Other, like, the other beers are yeah, available. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we keep telling to the bar there's other beers available, but we don't seem to be getting any uh, arrive. Ah, <laughs> uh, see, Tom's got his effort under control more than his old man. So a Marlico one, two, three, really, with Tom Baines with his. Bolton Animal from Kev Tinkler's in second. So it's Marley Coat Mary Rose, the ninth, who's won the class. Then it's Parkhead Bandit Brenda, who's a Cuttle Towers Bandit daughter, is in uh, second. And then Marley Coat Mary Rose, the eighth, by Trapework Progress in third. And then finishing up is Broyside Hale Pansy, the seventh, from the firm of J.M. Harry. Is that the British Frisian Championship then in the far ring? Yeah, you're right. Um, the the yeah, British yeah. Frisian Championship is in. I'm waiting to see where the RB's piece of paper is. And so in the ring, we got Winnow Jake Pauline the third from the first class, the youngest class, and then second in that class was Liz Mulligan, Empress the 83rd. Then in the... Uh, Maiden Heifer class was Liz Mulligan, Pauline the 21st, and Adams Cherry the 38th. And then in the oldest class, the Incalf Heifer class was Liz Mulligan, Honey Chap, second, and Earth and Gelt, Mission Mini. These are the six animals in the ring at the moment, being judged by John Cowser, our judge from How Common. Nice Adam class of Ayrshire is here, but for me, there was a comfortable winner in this class. She's the most balanced heifer in this class. She's not the most extreme, but she's hard top. She tracks on the tremendous set of feet and legs. She's cleaned down through that and a brisket for the eight, how old she is. And you just give her a distinct advantage over our heifer that's not a lot far off carving, just in that overall cleanliness over through the neck and down through the brisket. And she just tracks a little nicer on her set of rear feet and legs. You've got to love the, uh, the power and width to the heifer here in second. You give her a clear advantage over the heifer in third, just in that overall width, right through her muzzle, down to her pins. And you also give her a distinct advantage. There's just a lot more drop to her rear rib today over our balanced heifer here in third. Third over fourth, you just gave her a slight advantage. She's a little nicer of a thel setting. She tracks a little easier on her rear legs than our beautiful dairy heifer here in fourth. But four really nice she heifers. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Daniel, for a super set of reasons there. So we do move on to the British Frisian Championship. So John Cowes are lining the heifers across the ring. So the red heifer in front of you is uh, Winnow Jake, Winnow Jake Pauline the third. And then we have Liz Mulligan, Empress 83. There's Mulligan Pauline, the 21st. It's the third heifer on the show. When it's red, you're on. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we come to conclusion of the first day's classes. We had three good classes, uh, young stock here, a yearling, the intermediate, and the seniors. There's not very much between all, every one of them in every class, but I would just like to thank the exhibitors uh, for bringing the cattle out here today. And if you're showing your appreciation and borderly market for asking me to come and judge it. I'll now go forward and tap out my champion, reserve an honourable mention. So how will it go?
Six good specimens of the breed there. He's going to go with the in-calf heifer. That's Liz Milligan, Honey Chirp the second. He's coming back to... Right down for the baby. Yep. He's going with winner Jake Pauline the third for, as his reserve. And then his honourable mention is the... Uh, Empress. Empress, 83, Liz Milligan Empress. So Liz Milligan ended up with champion and honourable mention there. Split, split there by the winner Jake Pauline cow. Three greatest specimens of the breed. Um, congratulations to all concerned. So now we move on to the red and white Holstein class. Nice, nice class coming in by the looks yep. of it. Yeah. Waiting for the champion, just she was that much taller, longer, and more depth and more style than the rest in here today. I know she's a mature heifer, and then I went for the two juniors because they're stronger, their loin, and track better on the legs. Thank you very much. So in the red Holstein class now. About a dozen entries in this class, Alan. Yeah, good, good, good class of uh, efforts here. So a big congratulations to the Lawson family. A great cow family, the, the Honey Shaps. Nice to see them uh, prospering under their stewardship. So turning our attention to the next red and white class, judged by Mr. Daniel Bacon. Bottom of the screen, we got uh, number 14. Number 14 being Wolfer Ranger Annabelle Red. Tracing back to the, the Anna family at uh, Spruce Acres via Crack Home and Hemble. Just a reminder that them, uh, the team at Wolfer and Woodcat are having a sale a little later in the year, well, in April, following the Border, border and Lakeland Club sale in April. Behind that, number 15 is uh, Hallen Rachel Perla Red, a rager from a Disu Techno. And Helen Decker, Perler, excellent 91. She was a big, framey cow with a great udder. Breeding really well. Got a, the Techno has a Sioux Justice sister that's already excellent as well. So brood cow family in the making there. Really nice people, the Tudor family that, uh, that own that heifer. Sean Ed Morris doing a really nice job on the whole tip. Number 16, just about to uh, follow uh, follow Perla around the ring just to get looked at by the judge. 
Brownfield elevated Linda Red and elevated Red from a Rubles Red from the Gemmell family at Brownfield. Right, on your shot at the moment is number 18, Card Anton Rager, a vein advantageous red from B and G Donald. This is another Rager red. Tracing back to the uh, Geordie advantageous cow from Card Anton Holsteins. Red by Card Anton Holsteins, sorry. Go ahead, it goes back to River Dan. Yeah. That's the one in your shot at the moment. Nice calf coming into view here, 19, just below us. P yep. Panda leader more cutie red. Yep. Blondin Willows. So that's uh, a Molly Westwood and uh, Steve Kirk. Yes, it will, yeah. Rob Kirk. A Rob Kirk, so. Yeah. That's why I don't see Mr. Sirkham and Mr. Kirk here. They usually go around together. Yeah, maybe tomorrow, yeah. yeah. Coming into shot now. It's number 23, which is Norwood Bray Geordie Markai Red from David Howard. That's got a cool pedigree, that Markai. It's uh, Droynton Diamondback Markai Red. That's right, yeah, yeah. The legendary Droynton Savard Markai behind there. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That sort of cow that didn't know whether it was a black and white or a red and white. <laughs> One of them funny coloured things. McKellar's not sure what he is, mate. <laughs> it's actually a twin sister to the one in front of it. Wow. Oh, yeah, so it is. Quite rare that you get twins in the same class at the same time. And there's, a, there's a pretty good calf coming into picture now, 25. Yeah. That is a pretty good calf. This is a calf that I think went through the... Um, We've got our uh, yeah, first and seconds from each of our uh, dairy short on classes. And, you know, we got our two younger younger heifers out here. You know, this heifer at the top of the line, such a balanced heifer, you really got to admire for that. You know, it's just a, just a heifer with no faults. And then the second place heifer in that class was that extremely dairy feminine heifer. And then we move on to our in-calf heifers. You know, the, the heifer I give the advantage to was the, you know, the, the older heifer obviously getting pretty close to getting into her work. And, you know, she just got the advantage over the super balanced uh, heifer that was second in the class to her. But, you know, I'd just like everyone to show their appreciation for these four wonderful short on animals before I uh, go out and make my final decisions for my uh, champions. So where do you think he's going to go in that short on championship then, Gray? Four really good specimens. So where's he going to go? Is he going for the younger one? Yeah, he's gone right back to the top. Reserve behind it. Yeah. So the champion is uh, Moss nah, My junior selection was pretty comfortable for me today. Just a heifer from the moment she walked in the ring, just a heifer with no faults right throughout, you know, just a super balanced heifer, walks on a great set of feet and legs. You know, she's dairy, she's angular, and just that super balanced and, uh, heifer that I really admire. 
My reserve and uh, honourable mention placing, probably a little closer for me today, but I have given the advantage to the young heifer. You know, it is that dairiness, it is that cleanly, the cleanliness right throughout and that little bit more angularity. Not to take anything away from my honourable mention heifer, you know, she's a big, powerful heifer. She's on a lot of breed character and, you know, heifer that's, you know, probably only a month off uh, getting into her work. So, you know, I'd be really interested to follow, uh, follow in how she uh, turns out. But, you know, three wonderful examples of the, uh, the breed today and I've been a real pleasure to uh, cast my eye over them. So we'll ask that you just give them one more round of applause. So Mossrig Barrington Iris the 20th going through to the genus uh, Supreme Ch Championship Award alongside uh, the champion uh, champion British Frisian Liz Mulligan Honey Shap second and the champion Brown Swiss strong lineup of uh, of red and whites here with with two nailers for me at the top of this class Two good efforts, are you? Two, two real nice efforts. I think they'll, uh, I think they'd probably come to the top of this class pretty comfortably, really. Having said that, a nice class of calves. Yeah. Yeah, grandmother of this just gone. Excellent 95. It's Molly, Molly's first. Oh, yeah, yeah. Excellent 95 point homebred cow. A cow that produced 60,000 ki 60, kilos of milk in a lifetime. Mm. Bred eight VG two year olds, including four All Britain nominations. Wow. Slatterborgy heifer in second, owned by the Innises. Well balanced heifer as well, though, isn't it? Yeah, it's a lovely heifer. Six thousand eight hundred quid in the uh, summer sizzler last year. Was that what it? Yeah. Traded hands for. Yeah, it was uh... a snippet that I would have thought. Well, especially when you come second at the UK's biggest cow show. Ah, uh, yeah, no. Snippet that. Just coming round now. Be interesting when he gets to that red and white championship. There's six mm -hmm. good animals going forward for that red and white championship. So. Yeah, actually, and, and another class. Actually, yeah, yeah there's another class here. I've, I missed that. There's another class. Strong. Red and white strong this time. There'll be eight. You know, there's four four decent good calves in the next class. We're not going to be finished very early, Graham. Time is it? Twenty to five. It's my bedtime at six. <laughs> I've got to get to sleep before you get there. <laughs> So you see the championship now being presented to the short horn champion, Mossrig Barrington Iris, the 20th. Really nice heifer that champion Jordan. We move back to the red and white class and yeah, he's made his mind up. Panda whole scenes win the class. Well done, Molly. Two good calves in that class. Yeah. Top came to the top of that class. Yeah.
Uh, what an exceptional class of red and white Holsteins here. Quality all the way down the line, but for me, these pair of heifers made their way to the top quite comfortably here. It was an extremely, extremely close placing for me. When you get them in line, they're both balanced, hard-topped, extremely feminine heifers with long necks and beautiful set of feet and legs. Just when you get them out on the move, I gave the heifer in the first a slight advantage. She just tracks a little straighter on her rear legs. You also give her a slight advantage. She's a little cleaner down through her thigh over our beautifully balanced heifer here in second. You've got to admire the overall depth and openness of the heifer here in second. And you just gave the heifer here in second a clear advantage. She's just a little harder on top on the move than the heifer in third. You really got to admire the dairiness of the heifer in third, especially the cleanliness of the leg of the heifer in third. Third over fourth, it sits that cleanliness down through her leg, the cleanliness down through her neck over our beautifully pow balanced, powerful heifer in fourth. Fourth, you just give her a distinct advantage over the heifer in fifth, just in that openness of four rib, which is a little harder on top of our, over our long heifer in fifth. Congratulations. So coming into the ring now, the next class of jerseys. Class number seven, the Incarf Heifer class, born in 2022. So on your screens there, number 50. Number 50 being Carl Danton made Noel. First place jersey calf at Great Eccleston Show last year, Graham. I'm gonna, th I'm gonna throw, a, throw a spanner in the works with this on RB. Is it sired by a JX bull? Uh, it is, yeah. Should it be allowed to be registered? Depends whether JX is in the pedigree. It depends if it's got an asterisk. So the, J, the JX, if it's on, so the the way that the UK work with pedigree grade ups, yeah. as long as the JX is on the maternal side, it's fine. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Maternal side of the, of the size. So as long as it's... And it's as long as it's so many generations back as well. So yeah, yeah. Um, it is by a JX bull, but it's a JX bull that has been confirmed as full pedigree by the, the UK society. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah, yeah. Um, so number 52, following it into the ring. Pretty nice car. Oh, sorry, though. sorry. We missed, missed one out. Number 51. 52 is number 51 being Thistle Rose Unique Samba, ninth at the All Britain Calf Show, Dam VG86. Uh, yeah. Isla Arrow. Actually, the, the dam of that actually came uh, came sixth at last year's expo. Alan needs to unmute his microphone. <laughs> Number fifty three on the on the screen at the moment, Clyde Valley Victorious Circus. Fifty five is Uptown Web Lily from Miss K Watson. A unique webcam. Family developed by the Grahams at uh, Graham's Dairies. Damn uh, VG86 Colton. Just behind that, number 56. Saxone Cassette Cash. Richard Saxby loves himself a bit of cash. <laughs> so family, he's... Uh, great, great family. He's developed it for generations as, uh, as Richard and... Uh, 
the Saxby family. Yeah, it's a great family. Yeah, the mother being a 94-point precision cow. Absolutely sensational cow. Number 57. Just on the screen now, Skidall, Lemonhead, Chloe. A Lemonhead from O'Reilly. And last but no means least, this lovely dark dark coloured jersey in calf effer from the Armitages. Longing Islanders Daydream Daffodil. That's a mouthful. Hmm. Looks like it could be out of the video. Longing video daffodil. Nice that we've got a bit of a uh, bit of space now. We're not using the other half of the ring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let these animals stretch out a little. Real nice calf, just in shot now. Izzy Laird, it's giving you a bit of a rough ride, really, but it's a, maybe as good a calf as there is in the class for me. Well, it's been there and done that. It's our current reigning gold Britain yeah, jersey yeah. champion. Yeah, and it's maybe not just playing ball with it, but it's a, it's a beautiful calf. And the good news is that Alan Timberall has gone to the bar. And you never get offered to uh, for him to for him to buy you a drink, but he's doing it. Well, I'm pretty happy with that. That sounds good. Yeah, the current All Britain champion. She's just you got the nod. Gir just 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 gurning a little bit and being a bit stubborn, but she is pulling herself into first place. That's the heifer gurning, not Izzy gurning. Yeah, yeah. In 55 in second place, the Uptown Web Lily. And then uh, the Cash Heifer in third at the moment. With uh, the Thistle Rose Sweet Pea Beast in fourth. She's a lovely dairy heifer, actually, that fourth place heifer. Yeah. Lovely feminine looks to her. That's a good view there on the screen there now. You can see these really, really great examples of the Jersey breed, of the Jersey and Calf Heifer. Eight really, really nice heifers. It'll be slim pickings between them. 
Just had a request on uh, just on my phone, just on a message from Peter Hines. Big shout out to the commentary crew, loving the live stream, lads. If you just talk a little louder now, milking machines running over here in Cork Island. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's the only uh, member of that Heinz family that's still at home. I'm sure I saw his wife ringside before, and I know his two daughters are uh, are involved. So, thanks for that, Peter. Yeah, remember if you are watching from home and you want to pass any comments about any of uh, any of the heifers that we're, we're having a look at or preempt any of the decisions to be made, then just uh, drop us a message either directly to either of the three of us or uh, or via the Borderway UK Dairy Expo Facebook page. It's getting uh, getting fairly full around the ring now here. Turning into a bit of a who's who of the dairy industry. After all, the, the Borderway UK Dairy Expo is the place where the dairy industry meets. That's the strap line. And we're getting some rubber stamping here now and... Uh, some confirmations made. Blythebridge, Choco Chip, Ray, Ray Gee, current All Britain Jersey champion, can now add uh, UK Dairy Expo class winner to its uh, repertoire. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that, that the lads bought the dam or the grand dam of that calf in that Graham sale. The dam. The dam, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Grandest rumour. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was the sale we were talking about earlier. Yeah, that we mentioned earlier on, that's right. Where you got to wear your dress. <laughs> oh, it's give her a tough it's give her a tough time as it was top price, wasn't it, that heifer? In the Graham sale? Yeah, it could have been, yeah. I'm not a hundred percent sure. But it's bread a good one. Hmm. Thistle Rose unique Samba just getting uh, getting the edge over Saxon Cassette Cash 128 in the transition between the first lineup and second. Just moved up a place, that's always a good feeling. Isla will be pretty happy with that. But not as happy as Izzy Laird, who is uh, about to receive uh, nope. first place Rosette. So congratulations to the Laird family on that first place in the Jersey Incarf Heifer class here at UK Dairy Expo. And uh, just to round off the top four, number 55 being the Uptown Web Lily. Third place being the Thistle Rose Unique Samba. And fourth place being the Saxon Cassette Cash 128. Um, rounding off the top five is uh, number 58. The Longing Islanders Daydream Daffodil. We'll just watch the judge get a couple of pictures with our class winner and we will hear some reasons from him in just a few short moments. Another outstanding class of Jersey heifers here, all at different stages of their development. But for me, the heifer at the top of the line, she's, she may not be the biggest heifer in the class, but she's the most balanced heifer in the class. And when she wants to cooperate and walk, she also walks on the best set of feet and legs in the class. And it's the set of feet and legs that give her a distinct advantage over the heifer here in second. 
She just moves a lot easier on them rear legs. She's also a little bit harder in her loin region than our beautifully long heifer here in second. Second over third, she's just a little cleaner down through her legs. She's a little cleaner through our neck, but both are made from the same mould. And then third over four, if you just give her a clear advantage, she's just a little longer of her neck today. She's a little cleaner of her brisket over our powerful heifer here in fifth. And then fourth over fifth, sorry, you just give her a large advantage just in the depth of rear rib and fore rib over our balance heifer here in fifth. Congratulations. Quite good to see uh, see a, a, a new uh, new attendee of the UK Dairy Expo come in second in that class. Actually, Miss uh, Miss Kay Watson with the her uptown web lily heifer just shows that if you've got the good ones at home, it's uh, always good good to bring them out. First time exhibitor, I be. Yeah, yeah. Fair play. So congratulations to her. We've let the big beasts in now. The red and white. Uh, Final red and white class. Senior half a class. Yeah, so the senior heifer class uh, sponsor. Just on the screen there now is number 27. Number 27 being Droynton Geordie Promise Red. Second down with that being the jumping Jack Flash daughter we all know and love. Droynton JJF Promise turning into a star brood cow now with five star broods against her name and growing. Produced 80 tons of milk. And uh, yeah, just a really, really nice Geordie from uh, from that cow family there. Back to Windy Knoll View. That's right. Yep, yep. Bit of a soft spot for the next heifer because it carries my prefix. First look, black label, Aperol Spritz Red. The last daughter from the French import. First look, black label, LB Affley Gem that we picked up in the Labrasserie, no, not Labrasserie sale, it would have been the... Uh, Drakkar sale, actually. She's a, uh, a Rubles daughter from an excellent 90 Armani. Tracing back to the August Cow family. And then we've got Steitch, JP, Doral, Frieda Red. Doral from one of the best cows to come out of Y Farm in uh, in Somerset from John Yeomans. A cow that uh, was owned by uh, Jeremy Payne. Now owned in the Anglo Kiwi partnership of Crothers and Arrows. Anglo Kiwi? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty good effort. Strong heifer, just like the mother. the top uh, top of the screen there now crossing the top of the ring number 26 Hillhead Rimrock Cinnamon Rubles is having quite a, an impact through the breed at the moment and um, whether it be through uh, himself and his uh, his daughters or his sons like the likes of Ryder Ranger Rimrock now as well First pull to the start, Cheffer. Anglo Kiwi Heifer. In the second place uh, going in at the moment, just sliding in there was the, the Promise Heifer. And Aperol Spritz in third. And the Rimrock in fourth. <clears throat> I 
Could all change though if uh, the judge has a good uh, good good look at these halfers and scrutinises them, compares them, breaks them down, see something that he prefers. How's your pint, Graham? Pint's good. Nice bitter. I don't know what bitter it is, but um, it's a nice beer. He's this guy's reasons have been pretty good, RB, haven't they? He's been a good judge. Both, both <coughs> judges have yeah, they been, have, yeah. Uh, well, all three, including, obviously, John Cowser, our British Frisian judge. Well, he's going to have a change here. A big change by the looks of it. He's gone with the JJF promise in uh, in first place. And then the uh, the Doral from the Arrows and Crotherses, then Aperol Spritz. I think this will be the. Uh, I think this will be the last, uh, the last class of the, um, of the colour breeds. It'll be a championship to follow this, the Jersey Championship, and then, uh, and then I think we'll be into the, uh, into the black and white cards. Big Mac will be pretty happy with that. The first place with uh, with the Joynton Beast going back to the promises and she actually has an, she's another halfer with a, a twin sister somewhere. <coughs> she's obviously a Geordie from the uh, excellent 91 point Arvis daughter of that jumping Jack Flash. Cow that's had a successful career here, Agri Scott, Stafford County Show, Dairy Day, you name it, she's been there and she's done well. Only the four red and white hole scenes in the last class of the day, but a really nice group of four at that. You could have went a lot of different ways in this class, but the longer the class went, I just gave the heifer in first. She's a long dairy heifer. She may not be the biggest heifer in the class, but she's the heifer with the least amount of holes. You just give her a clear advantage over the heifer in second. She's just a little crisper of a hide today. She's a little cleaner of a thigh, and she's a little fuller of a rib today over our balanced heifer here in second. You really got to admire the feet and legs and the rump on the heifer here in second. It's just the rump setting. She's a little more correct of her thigh placing, and she moves a little easier of her rear legs over our beautifully stylish heifer here in third. 
Third over fourth, you've just got to admire the heifer here in third. She's just dairy throughout. She has a beautiful spring of rib, and you just give her a clear advantage over the heifer in fourth. She's a little deeper of her rib. She's got a little bit more scale, and she's in a little bit more form than our balanced heifer here in fourth, but congratulations. Oh, that was a bit of fun. So uh, that's the, the last open class. And now we're into our championships for the remaining sections, the red and whites, the jerseys, and the ashes. Andrew McCallum, Rogers on the phone there at the side of the ring, probably trying to sell his heifer. Now it's got, got a class <laughs> win under its belt. <laughs> Think he'll smile? No, oh, Andrew never smiles. <laughs> no. Unless you speak nicely to him. <laughs> so we welcome back to the ring our Ayrshire Championship now. Rich Irving Animal first out. Hey, lucky from the bounds. Obviously going back to that Luke out lucky cow we talked about this morning. Yeah, yeah. Had a successful show career at uh, Dairy, uh, probably the Dairy event it was probably called back then. Then following her in, another daughter of Hale, Holmeswood Hale Bella. Who uh, enjoys knocking down churns. <laughs> From Andy Rimmer. And bred by Andy Rimmer. In the second class, the Incarf Ever class, Marley Coat, Mary Rose, the ninth. She came from the Baines family. Troutbeck, progress daughter. And then, uh, then the bandit, Parkhead, bandit, Brenda. Bred by Kevin Tinker and uh, now owned by Tom Baines and shown by Tom Baines there as well. No better ring steward for this breed section than Evie Tomlinson. No, that's right. Ayrshire breeder in her own right. A name synonymous with the Ayrshire breed. That's right. Just getting them lined up under the flags. Getting them lined up under the flags to the music of ABBA in the background. <laughs> I can see you tapping your toe there, RB, just getting into the rhythm. I know, yeah. Watching these dancing queens. 